everybody. Welcome to Weekly Trash, the safe place to cleanse your mind, body, and soul of all that trash you consume this week so you can consume some more tomorrow. I'm your host, Josie Van Dyke, and I am sitting next to the content queen, the queen of TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, JC Marie Smith, everybody. Hello, everyone. Wait, what do you call your trashers? I was going to say trashers. Trashers. And We're then the I trashers. was like, is that correct? Trashers, Hello, trashers and Valley Girls Unite. I love it. Lovely to be here. Thank you for having me. I'm honored to be here. I'm fangirling. I'm sitting where what we said magic happens. You are so nice to let me use your studio. Of course. I'm like honored, but I have so much to talk to you about. I'm ready for it all. You're the shit. Like <laughs> no, everyone's obsessed. Stop. Like they, the trashers don't even know you're coming on yet. Like we're pre-recording this. When they find out, oh my gosh, game over. They're going to lose their mind. So I can't, I can't wait. wait to dumpster deep dive you. Always sounds really sexual when I say it. <laughs> Can't wait to deep dive you. I love it. But let's get into it. JC, where are you from? Today's dumpster deep dive is brought to you by Thread. Let's dive into practical style with Thread. They've given the classic leather wallet a sleek update, focusing on simplicity and embracing the mission to carry on. Thread is your go-to for all things carry and self-expression. Now, let me share why I'm hooked on Thread's essentials, like the vertical wallet, wrist lanyard, lip balm holder. There is nothing worse than digging through your bag full of random stuff, so I cut out the chaos with Thread. The vertical wallet is my go-to solution, and the wrist lanyard and lip balm holder make everything I need just one reach away, simplifying my life and keeping me organized. And as a mom, I need that. So check out the entire collection, including these must-haves at threadwallets.com, where functionality seamlessly meets fashion with thread. Use code WEEKLYTRASH for 20% off your purchase. And thanks, Thread, for sponsoring today's episode. I am from good old Gilbert, Arizona. Okay. I always say Phoenix, but it's, it's, it's Gilbert. actually Gilbert. It's yeah. Gilbert. Uh, Chelsea earlier was saying you guys bo- you came from Snowflake in the very beginning. Yeah, our our parents are from Snowflake, which is wild. When That's we crazy. found that out about each other in high school, we were like, "Wait, what?" Because Snowflake is so tiny. It's a little tiny. bit bigger, maybe even now, but. It's just a really small town, and that's where our parents are both from. So our parents, like my, our moms knew each other in high school. What they're a little bit different world. ages, but um, yeah, they're like, of course we know each other. Like our grandparents are friends, yeah. which is crazy. No, that's wild. Yeah. Okay, so how big is your family? So I have a pretty big, like my mom has six kids in her family, and so does my dad. Okay. If you're talking extended. Yes. But then I have um, just two little brothers. Two little brothers. Yeah. And you are where at in that? I'm the oldest. Okay, the oldest. Oldest girl. I'm the oldest in my family, too. And I just found out you're a Capricorn. We're both Capricorns. Capricorn sisters. I think that, yeah, that's tracking. Yeah. I feel like the energy of an oldest girl Capricorn. Are you into Zodiac stuff or not really? I want to be, but I'm not smart enough. Like, it goes over my head. I try. No, like people are like, oh, I'm a Capricorn rising under the sun, moon, Aries. And I'm like, (laughs) wait, so when were you born? Like, what's your birthday? I'm so confused. No, I'm actually not an expert on it at all. I just like, I know a lot about certain Zodiacs, like the people I'm closest to. Gotcha. And I feel very connected to the Capricorn of it all. When I read Capricorn stuff Mm -hmm. or memes, and it's like, yeah, maybe is it confirmation bias where I'm like searching for it to work? Maybe. But everything I read, I'm like, yeah. Except I will say they say Capricorns are, like, more serious. Mm-hmm. At least what I've read. And I feel like I'm, like, kind of class clown. And I feel like you're kind of, like, fun a little yeah, while, too. That's true. I, I think of the serious thing more as, like, again, I just I just mold it to what I want. Yeah, um, like, I'm business like, savvy. That's what I mean. Like, yeah. <laughs> business savvy genius is kind of what yeah. I was thinking. A mogul. No, but, like, they, they take <laughs> things... They take their life seriously okay, is how yeah. I look at it. Yeah, and I no, do agree. You know, same end of discussion. Just twist it the way we want it to be. Exactly. Because it's what you said, like what <laughs> we said. Yeah, exactly. How did you come up with that podcast name? That's like later on in the discussion, but I'm curious. So what we said is based off of mine and Chelsea's high school blog. Okay. B-L-O-G. Oh, Back yeah. Back in the day, um, we had a blog called That's What We Said. And I was trying to think of who came up with it I feel like maybe Chelsea I don't remember because okay. it was literally 12 years ago yeah but we were like oh that's funny it's like that's what she said but that's what we said and then yeah. when we were coming up with names for a podcast we were like wait should we just throw it back to the blog and do like just shorten it a little just do what we said so that's how it was born 
It clicks. Yeah. It's perfect. Okay, back to you, though. Back to just you. <laughs> we're just talking about you now. I mean, and your family. So you were the oldest Capricorn energy. Were you a good kid? Were you wild? Were you quiet? I was a good kid. I was a goody good. Goody good. Goody good golden girl. I. It's weird. I've actually been trying to think about who I actually was as a child because yeah. it's sometimes just like first of all I don't have a lot of childhood memories I don't have a good memory at all oh okay in general. um just in general especially long term though like okay. short term I can remember stuff but long term I'm always just like I kind of go based off of what people tell me or you know what I mean yeah. I'm like so I'm always trying to piece together like who was I as a kid and I'll ask ask my parents sometimes yeah. like was I like this or was I like this and I think Overall, definitely a goody good type of girl where I was like always kind of teacher's pet, overachiever, really wanted to succeed in like, but almost maybe not for the right reasons, just to like get get validation validation, and for people to be like, you're doing really good. So I've always been like that. But at the same time, I think internally, I've always had a very um, strong, like independent thing where at the same time, I'm not just going to like do something because someone told me like I'm a people pleaser but not to the degree of like listening to someone else be like you should do this I'm like why no I I don't know I've had always had like a very strong personality yeah personality like compass gotcha like I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do but I also it's it's hard saying that because I feel like I'm also have been a people pleaser kind of yeah so I don't know when you were growing up did you have a career or like an idea of what you wanted to be when you grew up was it so college was that like the way you were gonna go yeah, please. When I was like 14, I was like, I'm going to go to Stanford. Like that was my, I was like Stanford or Yale. I would say NYU. Oh, slay. But I got a 1.9 in high school, <laughs> yeah. so it wasn't even close yeah. for me. The, the dream was slowly dying when I realized like when I was in high school, I was like, I actually don't care that yeah. much about any of this. So that dream kind of slowly died. But that just shows the overachiever energy. It's like, yeah. why did I want to go to Stanford? For no reason other than validation from people being like, that's impressive. That's Ivy League. Yeah. Like, you're a big deal. Would never have even gotten into Stanford. Like, please. But I, um, from the time I was probably 13 or 14, I wanted to be a photographer. I became obsessed with photography. Bought my own camera with my babysitting money. And from that point forward, was like, I, in my head, I was like, oh, I'll be like a mom and a photographer. Like, I'll have my own little, little business. I could be a mom or something. That was kind of my vibe. Were there any photographers that you looked up to? Because I feel like at that point in your life, like Instagram wasn't a thing. So what gave you the idea to be a photographer? Honestly, I don't even remember what originally sparked it. I think my grandma had a nice camera and I would like use it to take photos around the house. And I was like, oh, this is so fun. And then... Now that I'm thinking about it, I think that was the the very beginning, but I wasn't at that point like, and I'm going to be a professional photographer. But then I just, I get like fixated on things. And so when I was younger, I was like, I want to get a nice camera. And then I, yeah, I saved up money. And ever since I got that camera, I just kind of fell in love with like capturing things. Yeah. And I'd be like, oh, I want to be a photographer. I want to be a, I actually don't even remember what type of photographer I originally thought I wanted to be, but that has really been what I wanted to do something in that creative yes. space since I was like 14 and so. when did you start like doing it for money like in um, high school yeah in high school I started making money doing photography doing senior photo shoots and like yeah. friend photo shoots okay that was something that I was like oh, okay I just scored I would charge girls like per person that because Instagram started becoming a thing yes because how old are you 28 yeah yeah 29 29. I just you turned 29. Just turned, okay, so you're a year older than me in school. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. I graduated so you, in 13. Yeah, I graduated 14. Okay. So Instagram was like coming about and I would take photos and, and post them. And it started becoming a thing of like, you want photos with your friends? Yeah. And so I'd be like, there'd be a group of girlfriends be like, oh, JC, we want you to take our photos. And I'd be like, yeah, for sure. For like this much per girl. I don't even remember the price. Probably 20 bucks or something. Yeah, like 20 bucks. Bag. Yeah. But then there'd be like 10 of them. And I'd be like, wait, I just made like 200 bucks yeah. for like an hour doing something I like doing something that's so fun and so I started making actually like decent money in high school for the time yeah being like oh this is kind of crazy that I can just I would charge like $70 for a senior photo shoot but then I would do sometimes like four in a week or something and then you know adding that all up I was like okay building your portfolio yeah and Instagram started to 
yeah, at the same time, you're taking photos for yourself. Like, are you setting up a tripod and building your own Instagram? Like, how were you getting content for you? Yeah, setting up a tripod or having friends like me and Ty have been friends since high school. And he was kind of the photographer at his school. And I was kind of like the photographer at mine. We would do little collabs and like take photos together and just, yeah, either set up tripods. And it would just be a mix of me shooting friends for fun or like actual paying clients at, you know, at a certain point and then just fun, like self portraits and things like that on my Instagram. Do you like being in front of the camera or behind the camera more? Cause you're very behind. photogenic. Oh my gosh. Behind a million percent. Really? And I've been thinking about it. Thank you for, for saying that. But I like, I've been thinking about how far my career has come from like, I don't want to say from what I love, but like, I've literally been having a crisis about it lately being like, wait, wait, wait. How do we get here? Yeah. Where like now I'm so forward facing because I thrive behind the camera. That's where, that's what I actually think I'm good at. Yeah. You like being the creative director. Yes. Like that's what I feel like my talent has always been is being the creative one behind the scenes. And so sometimes I'm like, wait, what have I done? Like, why am I now in the photos? Yeah. You're the brand. You're everything. Yeah. I'm like, not to do all of it. Like, wait, wait, wait. How do we get here? <laughs> yeah. I, and don't get me wrong. I love it. I think. I love that aspect of it too. Yeah. Like I like creating stuff and being in front of the camera too, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know how we came to this. I'm not sure how that happened. I don't know how we got here. Yeah. Well, obviously at some point your Instagram probably started to grow and your Instagram is you. So when did it, cause influencing wasn't even a thing like that just like slowly evolved into what it is when you started. What did that look like as an influencer? Like, were you getting paid to do things? Were there trips? Like, what was it? No, I was just getting paid to do photos for people at the beginning. And then this is when it kind of shifted. I was like dating Leif, I think, when I got one of my first brand deals. Um, and and what I started noticing is the photos of me would like perform better than my photography. And I was like, that's weird. Like, I thought you followed me for photography. my photography, not yeah. like photos of me. But I started realizing people like to be like connected to the person behind it, too. And so they like liked both and then brands would start reaching out and be like hey like we'll pay you you know whatever it was like a hundred dollars to wear this watch and I'd be like okay that's kind of cool and so then but then it just started slowly transitioning to where influencing did start becoming a thing and I started seeing that there was more money in that than like even the photo money I was making so I was like oh this is a route I want to take yeah I kind of want to like keep going with this because you give main character energy. So, like, that's surprising to me that you're like, I don't love being the one in front because, like, you were kind of made for that. I, okay, to a degree, I think I have the person, like, I do think I have the personality for it and I really enjoy it. Like, I really like vlogging. I love podcasting. Yeah. It's not that I don't like my face being there or whatever, but I think specifically when it comes to, like, photo shoots, I'm very particular. Like, I've always loved having a model who like knows what they're doing and being like, here's what I want to see. Yeah. And then when it's me, I'm like, you're not giving. Like when I see the photos, I'm like, it's not giving like it. Bella Hadid. Yeah. It's giving like five foot redhead. Yeah. But this is not the vibe I was picturing. Where are the 10 foot long legs? Yeah. I'm yeah. like, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. No. So I think it's when I'm doing photo shoots that I'm like, I'm not a model. Never wanted to be a model. Like, why am I now literally like holding up a lip gloss chart you know what I mean I'm just yeah. like whoa, 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 what's happening but that being said I do I do thrive to a degree in front of the camera I love I love it all I love podcasting the most yeah it's my favorite but you also started YouTube because mm -hmm. you're a big YouTube girl you were like I would watch your vlogs like you really? and Aspen mm -hmm. I was obsessed with your traveling all the things you you started that in high school though too right or after no YouTube started um, after Leif and I got married, we started a YouTube channel, um, together, which later I just turned into mine. Cause I was like, I don't want to do this like couple, yeah. just like have couples content. But, um, so that was probably in like 2017, okay. 2018 that I started Cause you YouTube. and Leif met in high school. No. You didn't? No. We met after high school. We met when I was like 20 or 19. I think 20. What? Yeah. How did I not know this? Yeah. We, we got set up through who's now my sister, my sister-in-law. But at the time, she's my friend. Yeah, she's married to Leif's brother, okay. and she set us up on a blind date because I was taking her engagement photos. Okay, and she was like, "Oh, I actually want you to go on a date with my brother-in-law," and I was like, "I hate blind dates. I hate stuff like that." I was like, "Oh my gosh, kill yeah. me!" And I saw a photo. I'm like, "So I guess it wasn't blind." 
because I did saw. see I did Love see like one blind. photo. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, maybe I'll go. Yeah, wait, is he? Where's he from? He's from Arizona too. Okay, We're like ten minutes apart. But no, you right. guys never knew each other. No. Are you the same age? No, he's like two and a half years older than me. Okay. Yeah. So he went to a different high school, mm-hmm. different vibe, all of that. Yep. So when you met him, were you like, I want to marry this person or did it take a second? Um, I was going to say it took a second and literally by a second, I mean one second. Yeah. Um, no, like maybe a week or something. I don't think I was like, <laughs> I want to marry him. But I remember after our first date, I was like, oh, love. Like he is going to be my new bestie. I wasn't, I wasn't necessarily like, I thought he was really attractive and yeah. I, but I wasn't like, I'm, I've never been that type of girl, honestly, who really? I've never been boy crazy my entire life. Like, did you ever have a boyfriend before him? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I've had like multiple relationships, but I've never been like. I meet someone, I'm like, I'm obsessed. Like, I've just kind of, I don't know, never been that personality. So when I met him, I was like, oh, my gosh, wait. I had so much fun with him. Yeah. And, like, I think he's so cute. But I wasn't, like, counting my chickens before they hatch or anything. But gotcha. then after we went on, like, a few dates, I was like, wait, I'm obsessed. Like, this is so fun. And how soon did you guys get married? So we met in June or July, and then we got married in March. Okay. So it was, like, nine months between when we met and when we got married. It was like four or it was four or five months before, between us meeting and getting engaged. Okay. So that's yeah. like a pretty good, that's a good time for Mormon standards. Standard timeline, I feel like. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then after you guys got married, did you guys move? Yeah, we moved. Actually, pretty shortly after getting married, we moved to California. That's what I thought. Like a few months. Yeah. Yeah. And where was your career at, at that time? Do you feel like you were like very established and like, was Leif working? Were you the one bringing in the money? He had a job when we met and when we were engaged and everything. Like, he had a just job that he didn't really love. And I've always been so just passionate about, like, you have to love your job. Like, I just, yeah. in general, I just feel like everyone deserves that. And I love my job. And at the time, I was, like, having so much fun with my job. And Leif is a very creative person. And I feel like he was not, like, tapping into that at, at his current job. So I did really, like push for him to be more creative and I'm like you should start um I was like you should start doing video stuff because like you're so good at video and so he actually shot Chelsea's wedding just had never shot a wedding before I was shooting a bunch of uh wedding photos and I was like if you're if you do video like we could kind of team up and make money together and he was just so good at it like immediately I was like you need to like do this. this yeah and he and he agreed he's like I really love it and it's actually so fun so then we started working together and he would do film stuff, videos, and I would do photos and we would like just work together and make money together and build packages out where it's like we're making more yeah. money, you know? Has it ever been hard being with each other all the time, doing work and stuff? Yeah. I feel like that's what we used to fight about the most. I was actually pondering on that the other day. Like we haven't, we don't really fight about, I don't want to say even fight, but just like little just like, bickering arguments, yeah, like annoyances because yeah, yeah. we would literally be together. 24 7 like working yeah. living sleeping everything is just like living and breathing I feel like now we have a lot more time apart like we prioritize kind of our own hobbies like Leif loves surfing I'll go to Pilates and have girls nights and he'll do stuff with his brother or with friends you know what I mean like we really prioritize that time now I think more than we used to which gives us a little bit of breathing room I feel like we don't like because yeah especially in like the vlogging world with YouTube it's like you really are spending the whole day doing content together and then you edit the content yeah and then you're you know looking at that together and then you go to bed and then you wake up and you do it all over again and we have very different working styles too okay like, so it's it, it was always like a just especially when we were making more content together yeah but now we don't honestly make as much yeah. together do you He's ever like in my vlog sometimes but yeah because I feel like your vlogs are mostly like you and yeah like your day-to-day they are except except for your IVF stuff which I, I do mm-hmm. want to talk about because I loved loved it but back to you in influencing when you were in like your prime of Instagram and all of that at one point you deleted your Instagram yeah why and was that not was terrifying depressed. was that scary to like delete something that is like helps your income yeah but I knew I could always get it back. It's yeah. not like it's like gone for done for good. Like I knew it's like, okay, if I times get rough, like re-download that. Yeah. <laughs> you know? But um the reason I deleted it was just because I was in like a very deep burnout phase. Yeah. I felt like creatively I had no ideas. I had nothing left in the tank. I was like, just dude, like focusing on so many platforms. That's I'm not trying to say it's like 
I'm not trying to do the whole like being an influencer so hard. It's just hard to keep up with all the different platforms. And like at some point you get to a point where you're like, I'm just, uh, I'm not doing anything well. I'm just running myself like very thin. Yeah. And that's how I felt. And I was just like, something's got to go. One of these has got to go. And Instagram was consistently always making me personally feel the worst. Like when I would get on there, I, I would leave after scrolling and be like, I'm not, I don't feel happy. Yeah. And it was also in the midst of me going through infertility. And I felt like every time I got on Instagram, it's just like pregnancy announcements. And whereas for some reason on TikTok, I didn't feel that way. Like YouTube, I felt like I had more control over, but Instagram yeah. just always be like popping up with stuff I didn't want to see. And like watching people's stories and comparing, I don't know. It just, I was like very overwhelmed. And so I didn't intend to actually delete it for that long. I was literally just going to take like a week off yeah. in the beginning of the year and then it just turned into six months. And I was like, because every week that would go by, I'm like, but I feel so good. Yeah. Why would I get it back? And I didn't have a manager or anything at the time, which I still don't. But like, so no one was like in my ear being like, you need to do, you know, I was yeah. just like, I'm just going to do whatever I want. When you were going through that, were you on like any medications like for your mental health or were you just like, this is going to be, this is going to be the thing that helps? Yeah, no, I wasn't on any medication or anything. I just was like. I'm not feeling myself. I'm not feeling creative. This could help. I feel like, like, yeah. I, you know, just kind of paying attention to how I felt. I was like, I feel like Instagram's the, not like the reason for all my problems at all, but it's like consistently when I get on there after I scroll for an hour, I don't feel well. So like, yeah. why am I getting on there all the time? Well, cause it's my job, but yeah. And that's the hard part too. It's like, you're not just going on there for fun. You're working. Yeah. So when you were on, you were, were you still on TikTok when you were on Instagram? Yeah, yeah, I was. It's not like I gave up or it's not like I deleted all social media and yeah. had no connection to the outside world. I was still on TikTok and I think I was still vlogging too for all that time. I just, just deleted Instagram for my, also I didn't want to consume as much. Like yeah. my initial plan was like, oh, maybe I can still create content, just not consume. It's so hard. It's so hard to like still have the app and be like, I'm, just I'm gonna, not yeah. going to get on. And then you just kind of fall down rabbit holes. So I was like, I literally just need to delete it. Was there anything you learned about yourself from that six month break, not being on Instagram? Yes. I mean, oh, I also got plastic surgery during that. Oh, your chin? Yeah. Your um, chin not that that like <laughs> matters, but <laughs> I, I remember being like, um, I, I don't know. I learned so much. I feel like really more than anything though, it just gave me room to breathe. And I realized how much of like, my burnout was just self-inflicted comparison. Yeah. That's what I realized. Like after not having Instagram, it really freed up so much mental space. Like I remember I'd always be like, I just don't have time. I don't have time. I don't have time. And then I deleted Instagram. I'm like, I literally have so Five much hours. free time. Like yeah. without this app, I, I I have I don't even know what to do. I have so much time. And I feel like it gave me time to actually be creative again and like even just have breathing room to think of new ideas. I think it's really hard when you are a creative or you are a person who thrives off of like having ideas and executing on them sometimes social media bombards you so much that you literally lose all your ideas like I get to that point often just in general like and I'll have to take a few like a weekend off or something where I'm just like I don't want to hear anyone I don't want to hear anyone's content and ideas yeah because I feel like I'm losing my individuality Mm -hmm. even with our podcast it's like sometimes I'm just listening to too much where I'm like I don't even, what should we talk about? I don't know because I am so overwhelmed with everyone else's thoughts. I don't even know what my own thoughts were this week. Yes. Are you like, whenever I have a podcast about a pop culture story, I'm like, I can't hear anybody's take on it. No. Because then it's going to change mine. And I just want to say organically what I think first. And then if I'm totally wrong about it, then like I'll own up to it in the next episode. But like this one, I want to like be in my own thoughts. Yes. But it's hard. Have individuality. When you're you're just consuming everyone else all the time. Mm -hmm. So how have you steered clear from getting in that headspace again after re-downloading Instagram? I, I think I just have better habits now. Like I guess that time off, which I've actually been recently having another crisis where I'm like, I'm going back into the spiral of like, I feel like I've been on Instagram a lot because I feel like Instagram's kind of having a resurgence right now. That's just how I feel. I don't know if it's true. But um, when I deleted it, I felt like Instagram was dying in a way where I was like, I didn't really feel like I was, I didn't feel much FOMO because I'm like, TikTok felt like where it was at and my vlogs were doing well. And I was just like, I don't really grow on Instagram anyway. Like that's not really a concern for me. But lately I feel like Instagram's kind of like resurging in popularity and, or maybe it's just like, 
I don't personal know. Preference. Yeah, personal. I don't know what it is, but um I do feel like that six months off like taught me how to just have better habits and boundaries with social media and not be like constantly consuming. And the second I start to like feel how I felt, I'm like, I'm off. Like not yeah. deleting it. I'm just like yeah. gotta get off for You're the like, day. I gotta take a break. Yeah. So I feel like I have better systems in place to like not get as burned out. But and I am just very intentional and aware like the second I start to feel like that I'm like okay it's gone for the weekend like I need time to breathe that's I wish I was that I need to be better at like recognizing that because that's hard to do because it kind of is an addiction social oh, media it's literally more addictive than uh, well like, that's not true it's more addictive than crack cocaine that's like, like, than heroin <laughs> no it's so addicting somebody was saying that the feeling you get when you refresh your Instagram to see your page is the same feeling that somebody addicted to slot machines gets when they do the oh, slot yeah, I believe it and I was like Oh my god! Because you like never know what you're gonna get. You it's never something know. Exciting. It could be something new. Yeah, totally. I believe that. It's crazy, and I need to be better at recognizing. Okay, Josie, you've taken a little too much time on this today. Move on. Mm -hmm. Now you have had so many cool experiences being in this industry. Out of all of them, which one would you say has been like the most pinch me moment? Like I can't believe I got to experience this. Oh my gosh! It has given me such truly like some of the coolest just best experiences in my life I feel like traveling I can't even like pick one situation but I really have gotten to do so much traveling through it and which is incredible I've been able to go to so many places and I don't know if this is just because this is the most recent but I think what comes to mind is like going on tour for our podcast yeah because it was just when you said pinch me moment like it is still just blows my mind that people would actually come and physically sit down and listen to me and Chelsea talk and like be ourselves, I guess. Yeah. It's so unreal to me that, and I, I don't even think like, oh, we deserve this. Like in my head, I'm just like, why would they come? <laughs> like, it's so crazy to me, but I do think that's like one of the coolest moments that we've had is For like sure. walking out on stage to like a theater of 500 people and just being like, you guys are here. And then just like people screaming and like wearing pink and blue with signs. I'm like, you guys are here for us. Like I, I had so much imposter syndrome that entire time just being like, how could you possibly like listening to us this much? Like we're just two girls yapping. Like yeah. it's, but it's amazing. And I feel like it, that really blew my mind. And I still just can't believe it. Like we'll probably do another tour at some point. You better. And it, it's just such a, it's such a cool thing. Well, cause I remember you did a TikTok while you were on tour and you were like, go for your dreams basically like I can't believe I'm here and I had just started the podcast and I was like watching your TikTok and I was like I want to be her like <laughs> I want to live her life like she's killing it like she you know always never knew if she like fit in or like what her thing was going to be and you kind of relating it to the church a little bit how like you just never knew where you're going to go with it yeah and I'm like she's just owning who she is and she's like killing it at podcasting and she's the shit like everybody oh is gosh, obsessed with you. you and I'm like that's so inspiring to so many people because it's really easy to like be on social media and not build a community and like just make it very like not personal. Just yeah. like this is me taking pictures. But having a podcast is super vulnerable and you coming on and like sharing yourself and building the community that you guys have is so impressive. Thank like, you. It's incredible. I, I love it so much and I feel like not to be all cringy like – I don't know, like, I didn't listen to my haters, but it's, like, I really, when I have been in moments like that where it's, like, we're in New York and we're, like, doing these sold-out shows and stuff, I'm just, like, I'm so happy that I've never let anyone yeah. get to me, you know? Like, not that I've had, like, all these naysayers and, like, oh, I've come from the bottom. I don't want to give that energy, but it's, like, you know, there have been people who just, like, don't get it or who are, like, oh, like, how's your little podcast going? Yep. Like, and I'm just, like, it's not even to prove them wrong, but I just think it's so self-empowering to be like oh my gosh like I didn't listen to anyone yeah. else's noise or like what anyone else said you know even people I dated being like oh you really think like photography is gonna be you know I just yeah. feel like I didn't let anyone get to me I've always just been like I believe in myself and like Chelsea and I believe in this podcast and we really did like we really did this thing together did I just it. yeah and again we have so many other goals like it's not like I think I've reached the pinnacle or something but I I am like so happy that I haven't let any of that get to me because it has led me to like a life I'm so proud of 
How have you been able to not listen to the noise? Because that's a hard thing to not listen to haters and not let haters get to you. I'm just like, look around at my life. Like, this is how, that's how I feel is like, I love my life so much day to day that it's honestly, it's kind of easy to block out when it's like, I'm genuinely happy with who I am, with the people in my life, with my relationship, with where I live. Like, Leif and I are always just talking about how it's like, again, we really, we really did it. Like, we, we got married. We wanted to live in California. Like, we wanted to be successful. We literally were like, oh, well, one day we'll get a red toy poodle. Like, it, it's just like we literally have everything that we, we want. We wanted to buy a house in California and we just recently did that. Yes. And it's like, again, I'm not even close to done with like all the dreams I have in my life. But I think when I look around at just my life, I'm so happy and proud with it that it's like very easy to tune out people who, I, I mean, I don't even know who they are, but yeah. like who are, you know, have Username stuff number to XYZ. say. I'm like, okay. Cool. And like, I will continue doing me because like, yeah. I'm so happy with where I'm at, you know, and I'm not going to pretend like stuff never hurts my feelings. Like, of course, right. I've had like moments where I where I let stuff get to me. But I think, again, it depends on the headspace, yeah. you know, that you're in when you read things. That's yeah. what it really yeah. depends on. But also like when you first started. <laughs> yeah. Because like where I'm at right now, like I'm I'm just a little baby in the sea. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. And those words like hurt, like when people are For mean, sure. like it hurts. And it would be a lot easier if I was, like, slaying, having all my things that I love. But before you got to where you are now, how did you push through and, like, be like, I don't care what anyone thinks? Well, that's definitely true. And I and I can relate to that, too. But I, I do think that I just have always been, like, I heard you talking about this on Ty's podcast. Like, I have always been incredibly delusional. Like, yeah. I really have always believed in myself a lot. And so I think even when people were, like, you know, like, oh, that seems dumb, I'm, like, you don't get it. Like you know, you're not seeing the vision. You don't know. You don't get it. Yeah. Um and so I don't know. I think I've just always tried to like stick to my vision. Like yeah. I I really have always had big goals and dreams and I feel like a lot of times it like how I perceive it is just like small thinking. Like yeah. when people are like whatever, judging this and that and like again, you're not seeing the vision. You don't know. Like let's think bigger. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. So I was selfishly asking for me because I'm like, <laughs> I'm going through a crisis. Like, tell me how to, what do I do next? Stacy? like, I need help. Like, what am I doing? I mean, it is so hard. It is. It is hard to like push past like negative things and just like go for it. But again, they don't know the vision. Mm-mm. They don't know. They don't know anything. They don't know anything. <laughs> they don't know anything. Okay. Let's talk pregnancy because you're pregnant. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm so happy for you. The whole world is so happy for you. You broke the internet with your IVF YouTube. I feel like. We hear about so many people going through IVF. We know people going through IVF. But to see those raw emotions, like, firsthand, like, you taking the pregnancy test, it not being positive, like, seeing those raw emotions, I think, hit home for so many people. When did you guys start trying to get pregnant? Like, four years ago. We started, or, yeah, maybe even longer at this point. Um, I was always like, oh, I want to get pregnant when I'm 25. That was kind of, like, my guy. Yeah, I'm 29 now. Um. And yeah, we tried for a little bit, didn't work. We did IUIs. We mm-hmm. did like three different IUIs. They didn't work. So we're like, okay, IVF is like our final option. Yeah. And so we started IVF last year and then we had a failed transfer. That was super hard. The second one did stick and that's what, yeah. that's how I'm pregnant now. Um, but yeah, it's been just a whole, <laughs> it's been a whole journey and I yeah. I documented my whole IUI journey too but I never posted it and so when I was starting IVF I was like well I'll like document this and who knows if I'll share it like I really didn't have intentions either way I was yeah. like I'll just lead with how I'm feeling yeah. which is try what I always try and do with social media stuff is like I'll share what I'm comfortable with or what I want to share and so I filmed all of it for YouTube and then I was like we'll see if I just want it for like my memories or if I want to post it and I was really going back and forth for a long time especially after my transfer failed and like that footage of me finding out it failed and like it was negative I was like I couldn't even watch it for like a month or two because it was so devastating to me like it, it was like one of the worst moments I've ever had and I was like the fact that I filmed this and that I would like maybe put it on the internet 
I don't know about that. Like that's yeah. really personal. And so I didn't know if I would ever post it, honestly. And then just one day I like had this feeling where I was like, I want to post it. I feel like it's just, it's so many women go through IVF and like I had watched this girl. Do you know Desi Perkins? Yes. Yes. She had, she's a YouTuber and she had filmed her whole IVF journey and, and I watched it and it was like really empowering to me. Like when I watched it, I was like, okay, I feel like you know, I could do this too. And, and she was like really the only content I had found on YouTube. And so I was really inspired by her. And yeah, I just had this moment where I was like, I think I want to, I think I want to share it. And so, um, I couldn't even edit together the part where I found out I was negative. Like I literally had to have life edited because I was like, I can't even watch it. Um, and I was already pregnant also. I, but that's how yeah. like sad it was to me. I was like, I feel so bad for like us in that moment that I literally cannot even watch that footage. So Leif edited it together, that part of it. Um, but yeah, we just put put all the videos together and I started rolling them out when I was comfortable. Yes, yes. And yeah, I posted them. How soon, so you, okay, you find out you're pregnant, but you didn't tell the world. Like you no. were pregnant for a while before you released those YouTube videos. Yeah. So when you did release those YouTube videos, how far along were you when you released the first one? I don't remember the exact time period. Honestly, like time period. I had known for like, probably a month or two that I was okay. pregnant by were the time. Were you still in the first trimester? Or were you yeah. Doing? Yeah. I think okay. I was still in the first trimester when I started like posting everything. Um, and I did it. I, I like kind of tried to plan it to a point where it was like, okay, by this point I'll like probably be comfortable. Yeah. Like telling the world I'm pregnant when like that episode comes out or whatever. So I tried to like time it kind of. Um, but I also like started, I put it off so long cause I didn't know if I was going to share it. That, like, once I decided, I was like, wait, I have to kind of, like, start putting these out. Yeah. So some people were confused at the timeline because it was literally, like, one week prior. I'm like, the worst day of my life. And then the next week, I'm like, I'm pregnant. And everyone's like, like, what? <laughs> wait, what? And I'm like, this is all filmed before. I just, like, really. And, again, I think the older I get, I just am, like, I share things on my own terms. And, like, not that I didn't before. I just think I was more, like, loosey-goosey in the past. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't care. I'm an open book. And now I'm, like. This is so vulnerable, so personal. I'm not just going to, like, share it the second that I'm going through it because I think about if I had just shared in real time. And, again, like, if that works for you, that's great. I just feel like if I would have shared in real time and then, like, had that failed transfer and everyone's, like, waiting, like, did it work? And then I'm, like, no. And I'm also going through those emotions. I was just, like, that just seems really hard. And so I'm glad I waited. No, but for sure. I just did it in the timing that I felt good good about. Well, and I think it's a lot easier to be an open book when you have less eyes on you. Yeah, because, for sure. But at the level you're at, like being an open book, it comes with so many people in your DMs and messaging you and wanting to ask the questions and wanting to feel like they almost deserve to know everything. And that's probably hard, too, because you're still a person and you want your privacy and you want to keep things on your own time and your schedule where you talk about it for sure so that like I feel like I'm an open book but I don't know if I could be this open if I was at your level of influence you definitely start to pull back a little I think or like just be more conscious of what you're sharing and my point too and like being uh just more intentional about the timeline and everything was like I when I started going through IVF, I was like, okay, this is harder than I expected. Like it's actually yeah. pretty hard. And I don't want even well-meaning comments being like, Ooh, you shouldn't have eaten that. Like that's probably why your transfer didn't work. Like just little things. I yeah. was like, I don't think I can deal with that while I'm going through it. Yeah. So it'd be nice to like already know the outcome and then start sharing. <laughs> you know what I mean? For sure. Were you blown away with the response that it was getting or did you I, anticipate it a little? No, I was blown away like I I knew that people would maybe find it interesting like the IVF stuff but I also even while I was filming I was like it's really hard to know I'm like will people even care about this especially if they're not like going through going through it or like in my head I I was kind of like okay I'm making this content for other girls who who suffer from infertility because I want them to know like everything that the process entails like this is content I wish yeah you know that I had seen like the in-depths of IVF, yeah. but I didn't expect people who have like never gone through infertility or like aren't even moms yet. Like I didn't expect it to, uh, be like a wide audience that yeah. liked it, I guess. I, it really did surprise me. 
um, how many people like connected with it, even though they've never maybe gone through infertility. Well, I think it educated a lot of people too, because a lot of people don't even know that what IVF is or how it works or the fact that like it could be because a man can't help produce the baby. Right. It's not just the woman. Like there's so many different factors to IVF mm -hmm. and how you do an IUI first and like all those things, all the shots, like yeah. It's not just you go to a doctor and they insert a baby. Like there's right. so many steps to it. Well, and I had so many people that was like a very common comment I kept getting. And then what was interesting is like I had a lot of my actual friends yeah. reach out and be like, JC, I had no idea that's what you were going through. Like yeah. they were like, I didn't know because no one's at home with you when you're doing shots. Like yeah, no. they know you're going through IVF, but like they don't maybe exactly know what that means or what that entails. And like I had multiple of my close friends who had been you know who had been like hanging out with yeah. them like that's what you were doing that whole time they're like I'm shook like I didn't yeah. realize it was so so much time and like going to the doctor every day and doing these shots every single day and um I had a pretty like rigid intense protocol I think even as far as IVF goes like some people that I know would do like one shot a day but like I, I was doing like two to three like I had kind yeah. of um I don't know if it was like more or less maybe just everyone's different but yeah it was I think that that's true that it did like educate people, which I'm grateful for. I feel like IVF is something that's common, but it's really hard. And I think because infertility and IVF is common, it's like we almost lose the, not like empathy for it, but yeah. it's like, oh yeah, yeah. Like my, my sister struggled to get pregnant. Yeah. Oh yeah, my friend, whatever. But yeah. then when you, I guess, maybe see more of the behind the scenes, you're like, oh, that's like so hard to go through. Yeah. So and I feel yeah. like that's the way with so many things too. Even just pregnancy, I feel like for sure. Before you get pregnant, you you see all these women get pregnant, and you're like, oh, pregnancy, that's a thing a body does. And then you get pregnant, you're like, oh, oh, this is a lot. Like, why aren't we giving people medals? Like, yeah. this is crazy, or just 100%. anything, like anything in life. You before you're actually in it or see it or f experience it, you have no idea. No, you can't understand. You can't. Oh, I feel the same way. Yeah, even about pregnancy. Because like, you've been you've been pretty sick. How are you feeling yeah. right now? I'm feeling actually pretty good. Okay, good. I almost said really good, but I'm like, that might be a stretch. Yeah, let's not exaggerate. <laughs> let's not lie. Yeah. Um. No, literally as of, as in the last couple days, I've been like, oh, I think I'm like past it. not wanting to die every day. Like just nausea wise. I I think yesterday was the first time I didn't have nausea. Like really? Yeah. Have you shared how far along you no, are? No, we I haven't. Okay. We won't talk about that. Um, then. It's okay though. But I'm, I'm like well into my second trimester okay. and I'm like girl and you know the gender but you haven't shared it yes. yet but when is this coming out again this will come out not this week but next week what day uh what day is it it'll be march carly will look it up what's my calendar you told me but i forgot march march 7th well the news will already be out by then actually what are you having i'm having a girl <gasps> oh my god <laughs> okay <laughs> die i'm so excited thank you Dude, what if too. she comes out of redhead because you have redheads in your family yes so even though i'm a fake um like she could be a real one she could be real leif's mom is a redhead leif's sister leif's brother my mom my aunt my cousins my grandma like i have so much red oh hair gosh. on my side so does leif she could so, be a redhead princess yeah there's definitely like i feel like the chances are decent but i'm yeah. also trying not to like put it on her yeah yeah I'm yeah, like, yeah you know we what can i mean diet down the road it's fine exactly she can just be like me <laughs> yeah um but yeah i'll be like oh my gosh imagine red curly hair because leaf has such good curly yes. hair but i'm like you know what let me take a step back because yeah. what if she's just like what brunette? if she has black hair yeah like, dark like, black hair comes out that's fine too we will love her regardless but yes okay when you found about. out it was a girl because did you have like i mean obviously you're gonna be happy regardless if it's a boy or a girl but did you kind of want a daughter first or did you want a son? Like, what were you feeling? What yes. were your feels? I've always wanted a girl first. Maybe it's because I'm the oldest girl. Yes. I, I feel like a lot of people, you just like want what you had or something. Yes. I, I ha a lot of people that I know share that same sentiment. It's like, yeah. oh, well, I have another older brother. So like, I want a boy first. Mm -hmm. And maybe other people think the opposite. But I've always like really wanted a girl. And um Leif is actually the same. Like, he's yeah. always really wanted a girl first, too. I feel like he gives very major girl dad energy. Oh, he's going to be the best um, girl dad. Yeah. We want, like, a boy eventually, too. But we're just so excited. Like So excited. It's literally the most, like, just dream come true. So you're having this girl. Yeah. <laughs> so she is secured. She is secured. She's in there. She's yes. cooking. And do you, do you have names picked out? I... 
Okay, so I had like a few names in mind, and the second I got pregnant, I didn't like them anymore. And I was like, I've heard of this. Yes. People be like, oh, it's just like not the name. And I'm like, what are you talking what do you about? Mean? Like, and I've always had like one specific girl name that's like very sentimental that I was like, oh, that's it. And like the second I got pregnant, I'm like, it's not her name. I don't know yeah. how to explain it. It's just not, maybe in the future, like, maybe, I, I don't know, but it just doesn't, didn't feel right. Yeah. So I have one that I'm leaning towards that I like a lot that Leif really likes too, that, that came about completely randomly. Like, that's just, always how it happens. Yeah. I was like, it literally came to me one day. I was mm-hmm. like, what about this? And Leif's like, I love it. And I was like, wait, was that the name? Like, did I, we do that? I, did we do that? And I don't know where it came from. I'm still trying to figure out where I like, thought of it or saw it it's not like the most crazy unique name in the world but it's like i haven't really seen it yeah. a lot so i'm like i don't know but that's like, kind of the one it. yeah that's kind of the one we keep like coming back to yeah. but we're also not 100 percent. like i'm like it could, change. it could change people always say i have to hold them first and see yeah. them first did you feel like that or did you feel like you knew With their names? My, so i had a daughter first mm-hmm. and i knew i wanted to name my first kid bentley whether it was a boy or a girl uh-huh. i loved Cute. the name bentley because i watched the bachelor and there was a guy down there named bentley oh please of course i remember but obviously obviously such a good season yeah and that was like a name i loved my husband hated it but i was like i am miserable i'm pregnant You're like give do me you this. see what i'm going through <laughs> give me it will this. be the name give me this yeah and then with the other two we kind of just I kind of just went with whatever because I there was boys and I didn't have any boy names and so I was like, I don't freaking know. Boy names are so hard. They're so hard. I'm like, I don't I even don't like get it. I don't know if I'm done having kids. I think I am, but mm-hmm. if I had one more and it was a boy, I made it very difficult for myself because all my kids are bees. Okay. And my daughter's name has seven letters. My boy has six. And my other boy has five. So I got a tattoo seven six five. Oh. So now my next has to have four. Has to be four letters and has to start with a B. It has to. It's like so specific. So I already, I have two options. So okay. if it's a boy, his name's going to be Boss. Slay. B-O-S-S. Boss Van Dyke. Okay. I feel like kind of That's bad, a good badass. name. Yeah. And if it's a girl, Beth. Cute. Beth and Boss. Those are my only options. You're like, that's all it can <laughs> be. It. So, so like, there's no secret. Like, those yeah. are my kid names. Like, everyone, if I ever so have another funny. one, you'll know. Did you in, did you intentionally do no. that or it just started happening? It just and you're started like, okay. happening. Okay. I never thought I'd be that kind of person that has all beats because I come from all J's. And so okay. I was like, that's weird. I'm not doing that. How many siblings do you have? I just have one. Okay. One sister. And I was like, I will never follow in my parents' footsteps and do that. Absolutely <laughs> not. No. And now here I am, Bentley, Brooks, and Banks, and I fucking mess it up every day. I'm like, Brooks, Banks, Banks, Brooks, Bentley. I'm I like, bet. Those are, like, kind of similar. Yeah, I don't know what I was thinking. I don't know. So here's those my advice cute, to you is don't do that. Gorgeous. Don't okay. do that. Like, every name should have a different letter. Okay, perfect. For the first letter. That's good advice. It's my advice. It's <laughs> the only advice I have. Motherhood is it's so great. That's my advice. Perfect. I love How it. did you tell your family that you – I saw the video of you telling your family yeah, yeah. you were pregnant. How did you tell them it was a girl? Did you tell them? I told at them the same pretty time? soon after. Like, I wasn't very secretive about uh, the gender. Like, after we knew, I was just like, people be like, do you know yet? And I'm like, yeah, it's a girl. They're like, oh my gosh, like yeah. just crying. So yeah, excited. I, it was funny. Like that, I was like, wait, I should have filmed that reaction more than the yeah, pre- not really more than, but like people would be like, you're pregnant, and then because I didn't tell anyone actually for a while. Like I didn't tell a lot of my even like close friends and stuff. I I feel like I kept it very close to my chest for quite a bit, and then. Yeah. So anyway, by the time I told everyone, like, I just was like, oh, yeah, and it's a girl. Yeah. And then they would literally start, like, sobbing and be like, oh, my gosh. And I was like, so oh, yeah, I forgot that that's, like, once you've been pregnant for a little bit, even if yeah. it's been, like, only, whatever, five weeks, like, since you found out, it not that it's, like, gets old. Like, obviously, it's still so exciting. It's still fresh. But, yeah, it's, it's, like, you already know the information. Okay, so you're just, like, I'm pregnant. And it was so funny because I'm, like especially after going in through infertility for so long, I just thought it would be like, so, well, and it was, but it's like, yeah. I thought it'd be such a big deal to tell everyone. And then I was like so sick and I was just like yeah. trying to find like a right time. And I was so excited still, yeah. but like, I feel like my energy was so low. So like in all the videos of me telling people, I'm just like, I expected myself to be like sobbing yeah. and they were, but I was just like, yeah, I'm pregnant. Like I've known for a while now, yeah, but I've, like, I've been going through hell. Yeah, I've been I'm really going tired. through a lot, but like, I obviously was still so excited. No, but the videos were so precious. I, I love them. It's so fun to look back on it too. Yes. So how are you going to, what's your photo shoot that you're doing? Cause it'll be out by yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. What are you doing? Have you already taken For like pictures? gender reveal? Yeah. For gender reveal. 
So my idea, stay tuned if it's executed like this. <laughs> I'm shooting it tomorrow. Okay. So I, it's not done yet. But I got like a pink dress and a blue dress. And I'm going to like do a video where it's like, again, I hope this that we can execute this. If we yeah, can't, then maybe it'll just be cute photos. Yeah. So who knows? I don't know. But I wanted it to be like a video where it's like me standing in the same place and it's like, do, 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 like going back and forth yes. and then it lands on pink and it's like, it's a girl. Okay, cute. So that's the vibe. And then Leif will come into the frame and we'll like do a cute little like photo shoot thing. Oh my gosh, cute. Yeah, so that's the that's the idea. Um, we'll stay see, tuned if we'll it's see, cute. Because we'll I'm like, we're... I don't know about music. Like I haven't planned any of it. So. Yeah. yeah. We'll yeah, have yeah. the outfits, but that's it. Where'd you get the outfits? I ordered them off of Forward. Oh, I've never heard um, of Forward. It's like they have really good fast shipping and like okay. returns because okay. sometimes for stuff like this, I will order, especially being pregnant. I never know what size I am. Yeah, you got to order. Never know what's going to look cute on the on the stomach. So I'll order like multiple sizes or like three different dress options and then they make it really easy. I feel like Forward and Revolve make it really easy to like just, ship back yeah. the ones you don't use or whatever. So I ordered a few options and I just tried them on last night and I picked the two that so I you like. Secured. Two I secured a pink ones. dress and a blue dress. I was like, wait, the blue one's cuter. Amazing. Um, <laughs> Isn't that so annoying? You're like, I'm like, awesome. Should we just pretend? Yeah. yeah I'm like, mm, perfect. Do some, do some like AI and make it so Literally. the blue dress is pink and then the pink dress is blue. Literally. I'm sure there's the AI can do it. 100%. Yeah. Like, I tried it on. I was like, why is the blue one slaying? That's the annoying. pink one's really cute too, but I, it was like, the blue one's really cute. So anyway, yeah. that's the plan. Okay, I we'll can't see. wait. Yeah, I everyone, I feel like everyone just knows it's a girl. Really? But I'm like, am I just like No, it's in projecting? your head. No, I think it's in your head. Because so many people, and I think it's because I'm just such a pink girly. Like yes. I wear pink a lot or I have pink accents and things. And so on my feed right now, on my Instagram feed, there's like a pop of pink in like every photo. And everyone's like, it's a hint. And I'm like, no, 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 it's really not. Like, like I'm not Taylor Swift. I'm not giving you I know, tricks. I'm like, there's no Easter eggs. I... But, and also then in one of my YouTube videos, I said, I was like, oh, our ultrasound. But people thought I said her ultrasound. And they're like, you gave it away. And I was like, no, no, no. Like, I just said our. But I'm like, mm -hmm. but unfortunately, unfortunately, that was correct. It is a girl. I didn't say her, but like, unfortunately, yes, it is a girl. So it, anyway, I'm like, most of the comments I've been getting, they're like, I think it's a girl. So I feel like people are assuming, but maybe it is my head. I don't know. Maybe it's your head. We'll see. I mean, I'm sure like you're like diehard, like stalker girlies yeah. that like are obsessed probably are like, yeah, it's a girl. I know it's a girl. I feel it in my bones. Yeah. But it's not because you gave it away. It's you give off girl mom energy. That's what people have been saying. Like I would have guessed girl. Yeah. Because I just feel that. Yeah. And and it probably also has to do with the fact Chelsea and I, we do pink and blue for the podcast. And I'm always yeah. pink. So I'm like, they associate her with blue. She has yeah. boys. Me with which pink. Which is so crazy. Which is perfect. Our dream come true. No, really though. So, but I'm like, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm so excited. Thank though. you. She's going to be the cutest freaking thing ever. <sighs> I'm so excited. I'm so excited to see what she looks like. But you had said you want a boy. So you want more kids. Yeah. How has this process made you be like, okay, maybe I don't want as many kids as I thought I wanted. Or are you still like, like how many kids did you want growing up? <laughs> I never wanted a huge family. Like I come from three and yeah. I always felt like on one hand, I always felt like my family was kind of small yeah. in comparison to just other people around yeah. me. Like literally all my friends had like six kids in their family and yes. my mom comes from six, my dad. Um, but that being said, again, I don't know if it's just like, oh, that's what I'm used to. But I was always like, I feel like four is a lot. Like yeah. four is a lot of kids. And especially just the older I get, I'm like, that seems really not like unattainable, but just like. You're stretched thin. Yeah, I'm like, whoa, four yeah. is so many. So I've always been like, oh, maybe like three. And now I'm kind of like, maybe two. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, though. I don't know if like once I have this baby, I'm going to be like, oh, I'm so good to have. I don't know. I have no idea how my perception will change. But like just the IVF and the pregnancy yeah. has like been extremely hard. So I'm like, it definitely has made me think twice about just... You know, even though two things can be true at the same time, For I can sure. be so grateful and happy that I'm pregnant. I feel like I'm like the happiest I've ever been in a sense. Oh, that's good. I was going to ask if your mental health was good pregnant. <laughs> You're like, let See me. That? And that's the two things at once because yeah. I feel like in one on one hand, I really am like the happiest and most fulfilled I've ever been in a sense because I'm like. I have something that I've been like wanting for so yeah. long, working so hard for, didn't know if it would ever happen. I feel so like connected to her already. Like I'm like, oh my gosh, I feel like I know her like in, in a weird way. Like it's a beautiful yeah. experience. But at the same time, it had like I have literally been nauseous almost all day, every day for like five months. 
So, and before that, I was already doing IVF for months and months. Yeah, so I you already don't was feel sick. good doing IVF. No. So I was telling Leif, I'm like, it's been a year. It's been a year of yeah. like me not feeling good for like, and not feeling like myself. And I'm a very energetic, like, person normally and so to kind of feel like I haven't been that way for almost a year that's a long time yeah that's gonna take a toll on you mentally yeah and I feel like my anxiety has skyrocketed throughout pregnancy like I thought once I got pregnant it's like oh finally like the burden's been lifted and I'm like "Hmm, why am I googling every day all day like is this normal is this normal yeah I feel a little better now that I'm like further along but like I just have been very on edge the whole time being like is everything because I've had to work so hard I'm like I don't want to lose No, this. yeah. Like Everything this, has to go right. Yes. Like this has to go well. So there's a lot of pressure on it just for myself because I'm like, I'm aware of how hard this has been and how hard it would be if I, ha- you know, had to do it again. So it's like, this better work. Like I, I just have had a lot of anxiety. Yeah. But again, I'm so happy. I'm so grateful. But I've been like pretty anxious and like very sick. So it's a, it's just a lot of emotions. It's a lot. Pregnancy is a lot. Yeah. Do you have, you like have a- hard pregnancies? My first was super hard okay but I think because it was so hard when I, she came out I was the happiest I'd ever been I had like zero postpartum depression anxiety but then my other two were the opposite pregnancy wasn't that bad but the postpartum part mm. was a little bit harder okay but everyone is so that's the crazy thing with pregnancy and just motherhood in general it's like everyone's experience is so different yeah like some people have horrible pregnancies and horrible postpartum so, I know and it's like why that's know, not like, fair you you well that's why I was like okay getting pregnant was so hard so like I'll have the easiest pregnancy yeah. and then I think that was almost like my expectation was like yeah. oh I'm sure because I kind of had to think like that it's like yeah. what am I gonna be like and I'll probably have a really hard pregnancy it's like no 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 let's be like, positive be positive here so I was like oh it'll be really it's been really hard to get pregnant but hopefully I'll have a really seamless pregnancy and I'll be able to like work out and be healthy and just like it was so not what I expected it was yeah. I was so much sicker than I thought I'd be that I was like, oh, okay, this is not like the pregnancy glow I was picturing for yeah. my, you know, for this time. And then, yeah, I'm kind of just trying to have like no expectations because now that both of those things have been hard, I'm like, surely the postpartum is going to be easy, right? Yeah. And then I'm like, you know, <laughs> you never know. Surely. 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 Do you have like a birth plan? Because I was talking to Chelsea and she's like unmedicated girly and I'm like, good for you. Couldn't be me. Are you doing unmedicated? I'm not planning on it, but I also have like no literally no birth plan in place like at the moment I mean I'm still like I still have some time to think on it I guess for sure but I like admire the unmedicated thing so much like I feel like it's incredible it's amazing and like our bodies are meant to do it it's amazing it is and I also feel like getting an epidural would be nice like I don't know (laughs) I've just been I actually really don't know 100% like at this moment because I've I have had like twinges of being like like I already had did IVF it was so hard I already like have gone through like really hard pregnancy not like I'm not I'm not saying like oh how hard could it be but I'm like I'm sure I could do it if I wanted to do it you could absolutely do it but that's never been like what I thought I would do so I'm kind of picturing not doing that but I also like I'm not attached to anything specific at the moment I really am not so who knows so who knows stay tuned who knows yeah yeah, my I was telling Chelsea my first pregnancy was unmedicated, but not by choice. Oh, and I think interesting. That's what scarred me. That's what like made me be like, I will never. Do Were this. you like just too late to get I the had epidural? An allergic reaction to my epidural. Well, they thought it was my epidural, but it wasn't. But they took the epidural out, and then new fear unlocked. To, yeah, yeah. It's not. It's like literally the most not common thing. I've never heard anybody have my experience, so I'm not even going to tell you because I yeah. don't want to stress you out yeah. because it's not going to so happen to you. It's not going to happen to you. Whatever you want is going to happen. You're going to have the best birth ever. Gorgeous. I no, I'm, so. I'm so excited for you, though. Motherhood is the most beautiful thing, and you're going to be the best mom Thank ever. you. When it comes to being a mom in content, are you going to show the baby? I've been thinking about that a lot. I hate to be, like, so annoying, but I literally have no idea because I feel like it's kind of like the IVF thing. I was like, oh, yeah. will I share this? Will I not? Like, we'll see if I'm comfortable with it. And I feel like that's just how I, like live my life now on the internet is like I usually don't share things immediately I'm just like let me take a second to like think on this and I've been thinking about it more lately like literally the past week or two I've been like I feel one I wonder like what type of content I'll share um I know one thing for sure is that I don't want to just be like to turn into like a mommy yeah content creator I really don't like I always want my platform to be like my thoughts, my life, like my routines mm-hmm. and kind of what I'm doing. But that is going to be a part of it, I'm sure. Because even even with pregnancy, it's like, you know, 
a lot of my content I feel like has been revolving around it because it is my life at this point. Um, but like going into pregnancy, I was like, okay, I don't want to now just be like, I'm pregnant, I'm pregnant, yeah. I'm pregnant. And, and that become my entire personality. But it's like, well, that's your life. That is kind of my life right now where, you know, it does revolve like a lot of my choices revolve around it. A lot of my restrictions revolve around it being sick. That's revolved around it. Like, so sometimes on YouTube, I'm like, well, I am kind of talking about it a lot because it's like a huge part of my life. So I anticipate that like being a mom will change me and I will be probably talking about, you know, being a mom and whatever. But that being said, I don't know if she'll, she will be like, I don't know if I'm going to be like, and here's my yeah. baby, you know, on my vlogs. Like, I have no idea what yeah. I'll feel comfortable with. I'm assuming you're going to film your birth. I don't know. Not even for yourself? Probably for myself. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Are you, but you don't know if you'll share it. But yeah, you, I'll probably just like set up a camera, like yeah. on a tripod. I think no, I don't think I, I'll have someone in there filming. Because yeah, you definitely want to capture that. That's definitely. Like I feel like I'd regret it thing. if I didn't. Yeah, I tell everyone, I'm like, you don't need to show anybody. You don't need to share, it, but like that moment, you're gonna want to relive it for the rest of your life. Oh, I bet. And so to have it on camera, and you know, like you do photography, you know how precious yes. those moments are. Like. It'll be really precious to be able to look back and be like, oh, my gosh. Anything moment. I've documented, I never regret it. Like, I always yeah. say that. It's like, you don't ever regret a picture you take. Well, that's not true. There's been a few. Mm, there's, but, some, there's a couple. <laughs> like, I've seen a few pre-surgery <laughs> that I regret. Yeah. No, but I, um, yeah, I feel like any of those moments, even IVF, like, in the moment, I remember being like, oh, this is kind of annoying to, like, set my camera up. But yeah. then I remember after being like, I'm so happy that I filmed, like, all those shots and, like, doing that, even though it seemed yeah. monotonous at the time. It's like those are memories and those are things that I don't know it was like really special to look back on so I completely agree like I definitely want to film it and have it to look back on no matter what the birth situation yeah is who's gonna be in the birth room I don't know yeah I think I think probably just Leif and my mom yeah I was thinking um if she can make it if not just me and Leif I guess yeah I had my mom in mind and I had my sister to take pictures because I was I I should have just set up a tripod Uh I scarred her for life I was like (laughs) I'm so sorry. Is she, oh, she's younger, she's younger than you. Because I'm you're the oldest. oldest. Yeah. She's si- almost six years younger than me. And so mm. she was like, I'm never having children. <laughs> because I, again, it was not a great experience. But then I was like, you should have came for the other two. Because the other two the other two. So the other fine. two, did you have epidurals then? Yeah. Epidur- because it wasn't. It wasn't the epidural. The it was thing. the iodine. The orange stuff that they rub yeah. on your back before they insert or they do any kind of surgery. It was yes. that and the antibiotics I was on. Because I got like positive for strep. B. it's like i don't even it's like they like swab your vagina and they're like oh yeah you have strep i'm like Amazing. strep throat like i'm so, <laughs> I'm so confused okay. and i had allergic reaction to that and it was it was so like, it was a, like a random thing. concoction it was the most random little allergic cocktail that i had that is unfortunate so yeah so rare it's not gonna happen okay, to you gorgeous. you're gonna have a great great time yeah um last question i want to ask you before we take out trash when you're in this industry have you ever had to deal with an awkward situation with people in this industry as well like do you like a fellow like an influencer like an influencer like if you ever had moments where you're like oh my gosh that's not who I expected I was going to be talking to like that was not the same person I have had like honestly I feel like most influencers and people that I've met that are in this space are so cool and like exactly what I think they're going to be because I feel like it's very hard to when you are sharing your life like I really do feel as though people get a very good read on who you are. Like it would be very hard to fake for like years being an influencer, sharing your life, your vibe. Do you know what I'm saying? uh, Absolutely. Anyone that I've met that I've been like, "Hmm," it's like, I could have guessed that. Like even from your content, it's like, okay, I kind of probably could have maybe guessed that you would be this way. Gotcha. Um, I've, I've truly never had like a horrible experience. I really haven't, but I also don't go to a lot of like influencer events. I really don't for living here. And like, things that I see people going to like I really don't go to a lot of events or like sometimes I feel like I'm stupid because I'm like I just don't network like that like yeah. I used to more and I feel like the past three years it's like I have a lot of friends who are influencers but it's like kind of my OG friends who yeah. I met like literally 10 Back years ago and I have some newer ones but it like I don't feel like I have this huge like influencer uh I don't know hub hub that I'm yeah. like a part of that people would be like oh yeah, she's friends with this person and they make videos together. Like I don't have a lot of that anymore. Yeah. Which is weird. Yeah, you're mature. You're an OG. You don't need to do that. You don't need to be networking and doing all those things. Probably would be good, but you know, you don't need to. I'm tired. You're freaking, when are you going to hang out with Kendall? (laughs) Have you ever like 
been in the same room as her? Mm, we've never been in the same room together. I'll just let you guys. No one's ever seen us in the same room. <laughs> like, are we sure? Is Kendall Jenner in the room? That's with us? what I'm saying. Like, like, we've never been in the same place. Like, at the I same need time. people to understand what we're hinting at right now. Yeah. Like, are is Kendall? It's me, you? Kendall. <laughs> <laughs> like, what's happening? Hey. What's happening? Oh, one last thing I want to ask yeah, you: yeah. the red hair. What made you finally do the red hair? I've been dyeing my hair since. I've been I've been coloring it red since I was in high school. So it's been a minute. I actually like had a little mental breakdown and was like, should I go brunette? Like I had this freak out moment. Oh. And like literally everyone was like, no. Like you're so stupid. <laughs> like, Chelsea off about? camera was like, you're gonna lose all your followers. And I was like, you're so right. I was like, you're so real for that. Um <laughs> they're no. like, who's this brunette? <laughs> like, who are you? Um no, 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 it was your personality. No, I love my red hair like my fake red hair here's the thing I um when I see some p photos of me when I was younger it's a little more red than it is now the okay. older I get it is like brown like you see my eyebrows they're not red yeah that's my natural hair color like really? they're very dark brown like it's not there's not much auburn to them when I was really young I kind of had like auburnish hair and yeah. I feel like just the older I got it just got more brunette but I do have the complexion of a redhead like I have um freckles obviously yeah. and like pale skin so which is very annoying because it's like okay so i have like red not hair the tendencies. benefit yeah. yeah it's like i'm pale but i don't have the red hair yeah amazing um but yeah i think when i was like probably 18 or so i started dyeing it more red um just because like bored i was like oh yeah. that'd be fun to like kind of and i did i went blonde at one point too like i've had a few different hair colors but I always just come back to the red. And it's so hard because people are always like, you look best with your, like, in general. People look best yeah. with your with the natural hair color mm -hmm. you were born with. Like, that's usually what suits your features. And I'm like, there was a glitch because yeah. I haven't been brunette in 10 years. So that's why I was like, should I just, like, go brunette? But I'm like, I just don't think, like, I photoshopped a few photos. And I'm like, I was going to say, like, have you looked? Because now I'm, like, looking at you and your eyebrows. And I'm like, wait, you might be stunning with the brown hair. <sighs> I don't know. I feel like the other thing, though, is I'm like, the red hair is such a part of my identity at this point, which I, which is not good. Like, to a yeah. point where I'm like, if I went brunette, I think I would literally be like, who is she? Who am I? Yeah. And people were saying, they're like, it's because you're pregnant. Give it a second. Because, like, I was like, yeah. should I die? Should I? Die? No, and yeah, it's yeah. like, I feel like there's so much out of my control that I'm, like, trying to control, control something. something. And it's also... Red hair fades really fast, so you have to get it done a lot. Yes. Which is really annoying. And that's that was originally why I was like, oh, maybe I would dye it because it, it back to my natural because dyeing the roots constantly. Is this your natural hair, hair color? My hair's maybe a little bit lighter. But it looks very but it's much. Like, it's matching similar, with your brows yeah, and everything. Yeah. I'm like, this is actually so much upkeep. Like, if I don't do it, like, once a month, it looks so dull. And so, I was like, do I really want to keep doing this? Because like, you do you go to Arizona every time you do your hair. No, she comes to California, and so I'll okay. I'll, I'll okay. do it when she comes. But it's also hard to plan because she does live out of state. Yeah, and I do not trust other people to touch my hair. Like it's so specific. Like yeah. the formula is specific, and I'm like, and she slays, and she slays, and she's been doing my hair for ten hair years. Hair by Chrissy, hair by Chrissy, my queen. She's she's been doing my hair since I was literally eighteen. So I'm like, no one else gets it. No way. Yeah, we were from the same. Yeah, town. that's right. Yeah, so I'm like. I just, I don't know. Maybe someday you guys will see me and I'll just have like dark brown hair, but. You just show up black hair. Like, Whoa. it just doesn't feel right. Have you ever tried to dye your eyebrows to match your The red? Hair? Yeah. I was literally thinking about it doing it this last time and then I didn't. I chickened out, but I who really want to do it. it. Somebody just did it. Was it Julia Hatch that dyed her eyebrows? I think she did at Chrissy's actually. Yeah. I really want to do that. Yeah. Um, But then I'm like, okay, then another thing to upkeep. Like I'm yeah, already no, you're complaining. Just adding, you're just adding to it. Yeah. I'm already complaining about the roots. Like now I'm going to have to do my eyebrows, but I really do want to dye my brows red because I feel like it would look, it would like it would, naturally. Yeah. Well. I feel like it'd be a vibe. Yeah. Um, But yeah, we'll, will tell. we'll see. <laughs> we'll see where the hair journey takes me. No, I love it. I love it. Okay, well, let's take out trash. Okay, trash let's from do the it. week. Personal trash is brought to you by Spearmint Love. Spearmint Love is an online baby and kid store with so many products between footies, rompers, knit hats, pacifiers, graphic tees, and quite literally any other baby essential. It is my go-to website for getting all the goods for my kids. They also have big kid stuff too, so you can do matching outfits between your babies and your kiddos. I love getting stuff for special holidays, whether it's Valentine's, Christmas, Halloween, Easter, 
Really, any special occasion, Spearmint Love is where I go. It has a fresh and modern take on the baby space while also carrying all the baby classics that you know and love. And they're also known for their best-selling organic waffle collection that Banks wears 24-7. The prints are always so unique and so fun, and the quality is incredible and also comfortable. And the shipping is extremely fast. So if you are looking for some new baby essentials or kiddo essentials, whether it's clothes or products... You have to go to spearmintlove.com and use code weekly trash for an exclusive 25% off for podcast listeners only. Again, that's weekly trash at spearmintlove.com. Personal trash is brought to you by Dressed in Lala. Lala is a fashion brand that empowers you to wear whatever the F you want. I'm obsessed with the brand. If you know, you know, it literally has the funnest pieces. I am wearing it right now and I've currently been wearing it every single day I've been on this trip. The colors, the patterns, the fits are so different and cool and so unique. If you're looking to add some magic to your wardrobe, you need to check them out. Use code weekly trash for 10% off your order at dressedinlala.com. What happened this week for you? Anything crazy? Um, what have you been doing besides all my literal mental breakdowns? So I was just talking about how, well, I've been talking a little bit about how I'm like having identity crises. Yeah. Um, who isn't though? I feel like everyone is like going through it. You think at least everyone that grew up in our culture, like a Mm. Utah, Arizona, maybe even like the Mormon bubble. Like, Uh I feel like everyone's kind of like, who am I? You're right about that. You know what? I was actually thinking about how like. Whenever I post about religion stuff, I, I just posted today about some religious stuff. I don't do it very often, yeah. but um, I always get, like, so many girls our age. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, so we're all collectively yeah, going through this. We're like, all confused. <laughs> everyone's confused. That's good to yeah. know. Yeah. I think it's just, like, the, I don't even know if this is the right word, like, the zeitgeist, the current, like, state of the world, mm-hmm. I feel like doesn't allow for, like, it makes... I mean, I don't want to go down, like, a whole religious tangent, but, like, I feel like it makes being, like, a Mormon girl difficult. Like, it, it, you see so much now that it's, like... There's so much out there. There's so much out there, and I feel like with more people, like, speaking up and being, like, oh, I don't believe in this anymore, it, it makes you a little more comfortable to be, like, oh, okay, maybe. Yeah. Because when I started, like, questioning my faith stuff, I feel like there was, like, not that many people who were, like, speaking about it. Yeah. Not that they needed to. I feel like people are a lot more open now. Yes. It makes it a little bit more... Like, it makes it easier on one hand, and also, like, you get your gears turning a little more. Get your gears turning. And I, think like it, maybe and I also think it confuses other people yes. who are very still, like, strong into it. It's like, everyone is confused. Yes. Ev- Everyone's so true. working through it. Yeah. It's like, I don't I don't know what to believe. I don't know what to think. I don't know what to do. No. I'm just, and I was telling Chelsea, I'm a gray area girly through and through, yeah. and I'm I'm just going to stay here for a minute. I'm yeah. like, I'm confused. I'm just going to be here. I know. I've always kind of been like that, too. Just, like, it, it's also... I was listening to your episode of Ty. I didn't realize that your dad was like not a member. Yeah, he's not a member. Which that's such like a different way to grow up than like I grew yes. up. Yes. So that's a whole different thing, which on one hand I think is awesome because it yeah. actually probably gave you like more, like less judgment, I would assume. Yeah. Oh, yeah. My whole outlook on it is just so different from everyone that's in like my bubble. Yeah. I would assume so. And like sometimes it's hard for me to like almost try to have compassion for what they're feeling because I'm like I don't not like, maybe, I don't get it maybe compassion's not the right word but like try to like understand mm-hmm. where they're coming from because I'm like wait why does it matter yeah like yeah my dad chewed tobacco until I was 16 years old yeah. and I never looked at him differently ever so it's like it's I just see it so differently which again is really nice it but is it's good not to a normal degree. for a lot of people I'm it's sure just, it makes it hard in certain ways yeah no they're and easier in certain ways yeah it's just it's confusing yeah it is um, but you've had a couple of mental breakdowns this yeah, week? Yeah, no, the, the mental breakdowns actually have nothing to do with religion. Oh, okay, good. So I just went down that rabbit hole, but, like, I feel like I've just been thinking about, like, <laughs> this is so, like, this is so dumb. It's I was looking dumb. at my Instagram, I'm like, no. <laughs> like, this is not... Clear it. Yeah, and I'm like, delete the whole thing, like, Starting which is what over. I literally did. I don't have yes. that many posts well, on Instagram. because I went to stalk you. <laughs> Because I was like, I need to go all the way down because I'm, like, getting inspo for your promo video. And I'm like, 
this bitch like deleted like half her life. <laughs> You're like, there's something to like, go off of. Like, did, I'm I like, can send you some photos if you I'm need like, them. I was trying to find like old school Pinterest, JC, like YouTube vibes, perfectly edited vacation pineapple in the hand photos. Pineapple in the hand. You could probably find them on Pinterest if you type in JC Marie. Oh, I will. Oh, don't something. worry. I will find or them. Or JC Marie blogger. I can I send you some. Them. I was um, like, I need to go back. I know. Gone. I know. I was actually like kind of regretful of that. I did just you archive it? Them. I was going to ask. So I didn't delete them. But do you know how long that took me? I think there were 3,000. Oh, I, I, I think it took me three days. Oh, I bet. Um, so I'm like. Because you're an OG. Like you. I had thousands of posts. When did you start your Instagram account? Would it have been 2012? Probably. Probably 2012, yeah. Yeah. I no, had literally crazy. thousands of posts. Then I went through and deleted, or again, archived, archived. them all. And I thought about it the other day because people will always message me. They're like, please, like, I want to go back and look at your old photos. Like, please unarchive them. Such a and weird like, thing for someone to say, first of all. But also kind of like, like okay, valid. that's like nostalgic for them yeah, or yeah, whatever. But also, like, why? <laughs> also why? <laughs> like, why are you doing that? But I I was like, that would take me. I, I had a moment yeah. where I was like, should I? Because it is kind of fun to look back yeah. on. Like, it's not like I'm ashamed of that part no. of my life at all. I love it. I think it's iconic. Like, a lot of my travel photos. It's just that I, I literally just wanted a fresh start so bad. And I was like, I just want to, like, start from nothing. Um, but I've been getting the urge again. And I'm like, girl, like... Because I was just looking at my my feed and I was like, oh, it's giving like influencer. Like, and that's not what I wanted. Like, yeah. I like just being like creative and posting like yeah. vibes. And I'm like, no, it's not your vibe. It's not like this is not representing who I am in my heart. Like, yeah, I feel like I have like a cool vibe. And then I was like <laughs> yeah. looking at Instagram. I'm like, what's going on? The cool vibe is uh, like, is it in the room with us? I'm like, what? Well, it's not there. But like, as an outsider, I like look at it and I'm like, oh, she's so cool. I need to delete all of my Instagram. Oh, no, 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 no. Like, I think what it is, is, is like, that's always what I've been known for is like yes. the aesthetic thing. Yes. And so then when I was like looking at my Instagram, I'm like, no one would ever, I was just being very, trying to be very self-aware. I'm like, no brand would ever come and look at my current feed and be like, that's a vibe. Like they would look at it and be like, okay, who is she? Who is she? Like, where does she live? And I was like, that's not okay. Like, it needs to be very clear. I love branding is yes. the thing. I love yes. marketing. I love branding. I love, cre like, creative directing. And that's all I'm trying to say. A rebrand is coming. I'm like, this is not okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, we, we need to fix this. I know this is the least important thing. And again, it's probably, like, me trying to grasp onto some sense of control. Uh -huh. But the reason that it's not vibing is because I've been so sick and, like, I just haven't been in the headspace to yeah, be like, you're not let creating. me go out and like create something yeah. amazing. I'm just like, I can't. It's like, I just am in survival mode trying to like get all my work done. Um, but I'm like, okay, I feel like if you have a platform, like you should create good content. Yeah. And so I feel like I owe that to people to like be doing something that's Give kind of cool. what they want. Yeah. So we'll see if I can... <laughs> Stay what? tuned for me with my yeah, new what? black hair. Like yeah. <laughs> shows up, black hair, creating I don't know. like whole new content. Yeah, totally new, new vibes, new, vibe, new, new girl. New I don't vibes. know what's happening. Like some anime. We're yeah. just like switching things up for sure. We're switching things up. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's my current mood. Have you been working on your house a lot this week? Yes. What's like what's the next steps with your house? The house is completely demolished, and it's like kind of starting to be progress where it's like new concrete is being laid and like things are being framed out because have you but gotten all the things like approved by the city yes finally oh good because once months. you get that like the ball rolling yes the ball has been rolling which is really nice but it's none nothing like fun yet you know what i mean where it's not like oh this is the tile that's going in the room it's just like yeah. literally down to the here's studs the pipes. yeah they're like yeah. here's the plumbing i'm like gorgeous like i don't know i don't know what any of that I means so <laughs> literally me he's like here's the plumbing it's gonna cost this i'm like cool I, I like guess. i need to flush my toilet yeah. so cool like if it's gonna work if literally the shower will be warm great like i don't awesome. know what's going on so i feel like in a couple months like in like a month or two it'll yeah. start getting more fun how many bedrooms will it have it will have four when it's all said and done oh. but the fourth is like kind of an office, office. den how area. many do you have now three three okay so mm -hmm. is it bigger like the overall yeah the size? It's, it's a little bigger um it's still like cozy though i feel like any house like around here yeah. is just like kind of I'm going for it's like coastal quaint. bungalow yeah. vibes. Yeah. So the rooms are not big. Like even yeah. though I feel like saying four bedrooms, like oh, okay, I'm like mm, they're pretty small rooms. It's like they're not like a big house. Two closets, two bedrooms. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they're a little tiny. Exactly. They're like small rooms, but it's a it's a perfect little like charming vibe. Are you renting now? Like do you not own the house that you're in no, now? No, no, yeah, we're renting. Oh, we've I been renting I'm... up until now. Okay, until now. Well, that's huge then. 
Yeah, it's so exciting. For some reason, I thought you owned the house you were because you've been in it for a hot minute. Yeah, we've been in it for like two or three years now. Yeah. So, and I love it. I love it so much. But I also like, obviously, because we've always rented, um, there's always been things like about every house we've lived in that it's like I would change if I owned yeah. it, of yeah. course. And so it's kind of fun being able to like do what you want. actually do what I want in this house and be like, you know, there's like a joke about my fridge. Like my fridge is legitimately 50 years old. Like yeah. it is so scary. The fact that I drink water out of it is like probably not okay. Um, yeah, that's crazy. It's like really, it's just kind of a scary fridge. But I, I kind of yeah. love her. Her name's Miss Fridge. But Miss Fridge. Um, people like, uh, so what I'm saying is like, would I change the fridge? Yes. Would yes. I change like the appliances in my current house? The, the sh- kitchen is kind of like a really weird setup and like, it doesn't align with what I would want, but yeah. I also love that house. It's not the vibe. It's that not. You'd want, it's no. not what I'm picturing, but I do love that house. But did you ask I'm if you saying, could buy it from the renters at all? No. The owners? No. no. Like, she had just bought it. Oh. Um, so she literally was like, like months before. Oh. So and she's then like, I'm not giving it away. Yeah, yeah. So I knew, I knew that was not a possibility. But like Leif and I kind of would talk about it. We're like, oh, if we like did buy this house, yeah. here's what we would do differently. But it also doesn't have like a backyard, really. I don't know. There's things mm. about it I wouldn't like. I wouldn't buy that house, but. Um, that being said, I do love it. It's just exciting to do what I want now. Yeah. You know? Do you think you'll be in this house long term? Not like long, long term, but for a while, especially with how long it's been taking. I'm yeah. like, okay. Yeah. We're going to be like, I, w- I want to stay there for a while and enjoy it. Well, and it definitely is a great investment. Yeah. Like no matter what, you better keep that thing and rent it out or Airbnb because it's going to be a gold mine. Of course. Like it's going to be beautiful. Yeah. And we're doing an addition and like, I know it'll be a good investment. So. Would you ever move back to Arizona? Never say never, but I don't plan on it at the moment. Yeah. Leif's family actually moved, so they, they used to live in Arizona, and now they don't live there anymore. And my family's not, like, super attached to Arizona, so I'm like, especially if neither of our families live there, it's like, yeah. what would be the point? Like, yeah. you know, because I feel like, if anything, it would be like, oh, maybe once we have a family, and yeah. if all of our family lives in Arizona, like, that could be fun. Yeah. But California is also very close to Arizona. Very close. I see my family so much because my my mom works for the airlines and so they fly oh, up nice. all the time because it's literally free for them. Also, your mom's style decor, like she's everything. You just came from like the most creative family. She, they are all very creative, and my mom is like, oh my gosh, she has been so much help with this house. Oh, like I, I would be screwed without her. Did she like go to school for that at all, no. or is it just natural? She's just a naturally talented love girly. She really love. is. She's really has a really good eye for design, and like. Even just at our house, I would have never come up with, like, some of the ideas that she did for us. Like, I don't know. I just, I feel like I'm creative, but not necessarily with, like, architecture and design, like, yeah. of a house. I'm like, yeah. uh, I don't know. Knock that wall down. Yeah, She's yeah, like, oh, works. maybe if you shifted the door here, like, this would look more open. I'm like, oh, I would have never yeah. pictured that. Or, like, if you put a window here. I don't know. Just things that I'm like, okay, that, I'm really glad to have you. I'd be screwed. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm excited to see it finish. Me too. Are, so fun. Do you have like a date of when they think like you'll be able to live in it? I'm not trusting anything. Yeah. I'm not trusting a thing. I know that it won't be before my child comes. Yeah. Um. I I'm not even remotely banking on that. Originally, I thought it would be like really close in timing, and now I'm like, she'll probably be a few months old. So are you going to set a nursery in this new house, or are you just yeah. going to have her be in your room? Just like a makeshift situation. Yeah. With like maybe like a dresser to put her stuff well, in it's and stuff. exciting to buy this stuff. And, and I'm already like in nesting mode. And yeah. I think maybe that's another reason for the crisis is, is like, I'm wanting to like control things and have things be settled. And like nothing is feeling settled. Cause it's like, yeah. I haven't been feeling well. My house isn't done. It's all such exciting things, but it's like so much chaos. Yeah. That I'm like, want some stability. Yeah. So I'm like, I've been cleaning out my office to maybe make it okay. into like a little, just, I don't, I don't, she's not going to like sleep in there really, but just to have, just to have it be like a cute space with like a rocking chair that I can like go and I don't know. Yeah. So hopefully we'll do that. No, but the house is very exciting. Yeah. Any other trash that's happened this week besides house, mental breakdowns? (sighs) I think that about Um, covers it. Do you have any trips, fun trips planned? Because you travel so much. We haven't traveled in so long because of like our IVF stuff and pregnancy, but we are going to go on a little baby moon. Fun. Yeah. Um, we're, I think we're going to go to Mexico. Okay. Uh, just cause it's close. It is I close. was like originally wanting to do something more extravagant. Yes. Exotic. And like, just truly with the way I've been feeling, I'm like, yeah. I just want to like lay by a pool and like 
maybe get a massage and like yeah. be in a nice hotel. What are you gonna do, Cabo, Cancun? I think Cabo. Cabo seems more your vibe. Yeah, there's like a lot of really pretty hotels and resorts there, so I feel like we'll maybe go there and just like have a relaxing few days. You deserve it, Mama. Um, thank you. I I feel like that'd be fun. I yeah, I was thinking maybe Hawaii. Thinking maybe going like to the Caribbean or something, but I'm like, it's just it's a further flight. Yeah, no, pregnancy's like, uncomfortable. It on a plane. is. I'm just like, I think for the vibes I want, it might be the move to go to Mexico. Cabo's a good move. So, and then I'm doing my friend is having a bachelorette party, um, like the following month. So I'll be on a trip for that. And my mom just texted. She's like, let's go on one last trip before you like with my family. Yeah. I'm like, okay, now we're <laughs> the expenses we're are racking up, but yeah. I will try and see what I can do. So we might go on like a little family trip before. I don't know. Fun. Family trips is where you go, mom, dad. Like, do you want to pay for it? Yeah, do you want to pay like, for it and like, do and plan in the whole thing? Like, you guys, you want, yeah, let's do family trip. Let me yeah, know. Yeah, let yeah. me know where we're going. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah I know, yeah. and it's so easy for them because they fly for free, and I'm like, remember, I don't have the flight benefits anymore. Like, can you add me somehow. Yeah, I know. I wish I lost flight benefits when I was like, you lose them when you're oh, how old are you? What airline? American. American. Oh, like you, okay. like I was on my mom's benefits, so I got free flights until I was like, "You're flying standby and stuff. It's you, not like you're like yeah, it's fully not like, you get like a full first class." Full yeah. Thing. yeah. Oh my gosh, what is the age? I want to say it's like twenty four. Wait, but I thought I, you were gonna say like sixteen. No, but I, it might be twenty two. It's like that. Maybe crazy. it's twenty two. Yeah, so for the first, like, year or two of marriage with Leif, I had flight benefits. Um, could Leif be somehow He added could get, like, a buddy pass thing. Okay. Um, but he wasn't on the actual benefits. That was probably so nice as a photographer oh. to have that benefit. That was, like, the reason I my career was what yeah. it was. Because I could travel for so much cheaper. Like, I flew to Paris for, like, $100. Yeah. You know, again, the worst seat in the world, but... You, you do gotta do what you do. gotta do. Um, and sometimes what's awesome about flight benefits and like flying standby is that sometimes it's the opposite where it's like the best seat. Like there will be just open first class and like you have a standby ticket and they're like, okay, like you're flying first cool. class to me and my mom flew first class home from Japan. Like incredible. Sorry. Okay, no, that's a dream because that's yeah. probably the worst flight on the world. Yeah, so long. So like you get really cool experiences mixed in there. I, I mean, wanna, it's amazing. I like wanna travel, but I don't wanna travel. Like I wanna get to places, but I don't wanna have to go on a flight to get have to you them. like traveled internationally well so my dad owned a travel business okay. still does he's a travel agent and so i grew up going all kinds of places oh i haven't been out of the country besides mexico uh -huh. and canada in 20 years oh wow but like i grew up going to denmark paris oh, amazing all the like portugal the coolest places i don't remember any of them dang it is like something i've found too though where like some people i know just aren't drawn to traveling very yeah. much like i very much am but i don't i don't know if it's because what's it called wonderlust yeah wonderlust leave her you wild have, you have wonderlust i do yeah. i i like i think maybe because i didn't travel a lot internationally until my mom got like okay. until she started working for the airlines when i was like 18 and gotcha. then i started traveling for photography and stuff and that like ignited where i was like oh my gosh, the world is so amazing. Like, I cannot believe yeah. that people, like, live in France. Like, when I was there, I'm yeah. just like, I'm in the countryside of France and, like, people just live here and this is amazing. Yeah, it, like, gave up. me, like, a little bug of just, like, oh, I love it. But even now, like, granted, I've, I have traveled a lot, so I feel like, not that I'm, like, over it, but it's, like, it does seem like a lot more work now. And maybe yeah. it's just because I'm pregnant and, like, again, I've had, like, a rough year. Yeah, but I'm, like... a little bit of a funk with the pregnancy. Yeah, you know? but it's, like, to to get on those long flights, I'm, like, oh, wow, that's, like... It is kind of a lot no, to a just, lot. like... And even plan the trip and do it all. Like, it's a lot. That's why people have travel agents. That's why my dad yeah. has a job, except he doesn't... She's, like, hire him he here. He, like, doesn't really do anything. <laughs> he, like, has his, like, old people that he's worked with for, like, 30 years, and that's, like, the only people he deals with. He's, like... Because nowadays, everyone does, like, Expedia and all yeah. that. I don't think people understand you don't pay for a travel agent. They literally get commission. Oh, interesting. Off so of if what? anybody didn't know that, like, like off your flights and like a cruise or your okay. hotel, like you don't pay a travel agent. They just make a portion of the commission. I didn't know that. Yeah. I don't think anybody knows that. Interesting. So, so what you learned you today. Were, you were saying that your husband doesn't like to travel, right? No. Hates flying. Or, okay, like I would have flying. to like drug him. Okay. Give him like a five Xanaxes and he could just. Okay. But I think he would enjoy it if he was drugged and like on first class. <laughs> I think he would. I think Perfect. he would like when we get there and we like has to pay thousands it. and like yeah. he's literally just out just cold drugged. the whole time. Like they're like, is that your husband? <laughs> yeah, like... he's fine. He's he's just sick. It's fine. Oh, yeah, no. no, he's not a travel guy at, 
at mm. all, which is unfortunate because who else am I going to go with? I guess I'm going to go with Ty. I was telling Ty, I'm like, let's go okay. to France. Yeah, <laughs> because I'm ready. Uh, my husband won't go with me. But but then I have like girlfriends where I'm like, we should go on a girl's trip and we like get it all figured out. But then everyone bails. And it's like, OK, cool. <sighs> I was going to say, sometimes you have to like really just like commit and yeah, be like, just do we it. are all doing this. Like yeah. book the flights today. Like right now. Yeah. Like I, I haven't been on many international trips with like groups of friends because that's a lot to coordinate, but it is amazing. So like m- me and three, it was me, Chelsea, and then two of our friends, we went to Paris and did Nice, like the South of France a few years ago. Oh, pretty. So amazing. Like truly. And I'm just so glad we actually did it. Like it yeah. was a stretch. You know what I mean? It was just, it's expensive to go over there and like, for us all to coordinate dates and stuff it was just like but now that I look back I'm like oh my gosh I am so happy we made that happen like you just have to make it out of the group chat you have to like you have literally be like you guys we're booking flights like by this week you know no no or I just need new friends yeah if my my friends are listening like yeah what the hell like let's go like I said even for my birthday I was like we're gonna go to Vegas we had like 10 people in the group text we're like we're just gonna go to Vegas literally not far it's a 30 minute flight from Salt Lake we're like, we're going to go to Vegas. By the end of the week, everyone was canceling. Wait, I was no. Like, I was like, okay, so now I'm staying the night in Salt Lake City with my only two friends. And that's what we did. Wait, I hate that for and you. And I was like, it was Vegas. Like, like it wasn't that bad. It wasn't that like, far. it wasn't that crazy. Can you, I can't even imagine if I said Paris. <laughs> if I was, you have to find people like, who have going a similar. to Paris. <laughs> only if they're like they really want you know i feel like yeah they have to also want it. i was in a different stage of life then yeah and none of us all, had kids all my friends have we all have kids yeah none of us had kids um one of my friends was single it was very much like okay we can make this happen yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and now I my friends th- can't even do vegas <laughs> like now vegas <laughs> is off the table i guess it is hard i i it admit is. it's hard when everyone just has like lives but i feel like, like you make time for what lives? you prioritize so true so it's like if you want to go on a trip You'll make it happen. Yeah. That's what I believe. It's like when people say if he wanted to, he would with mm-hmm. like boyfriends and husbands. You should send Same that thing. to your group message. Be like, be like, if you wanted if to. If you wanted to, you would. You would have. You would have. <laughs> Bitches. <laughs> okay. We're going to do Trash Top a Can. Yay. You're going to pick it to. I have no idea what's in here. Carly okay. writes them. So Trash Top a Can is brought to you by Road to Baby. Did you know that one in eight people in the U.S. alone struggle with infertility and have difficulties growing their family? The team at Road to Baby understand the pain and frustration that can come with infertility, and they are there to help you navigate that often bumpy road to parenthood. Road to Baby is a surrogacy, egg, and sperm donation agency based out of San Diego, California, who connects those in need with surrogates, egg donors, and sperm donors to help them grow their family. Road to Baby believes in fairly compensating those who make these dreams of parenthood come true. First-time surrogates working with Road to Baby receive a minimum of $56,000 for their incredible dedication. Egg donors are generously compensated at $10,000 per donation, and sperm donors each earn $5,000 for their first donation. If you've ever considered becoming a surrogate, egg donor, or sperm donor yourself, I encourage you to reach out to Road to Baby. You have the power to change lives and make parenthood dreams come true. And wait, there's more. If egg, surrogacy, or sperm donation isn't for you, but you know someone who might be a perfect fit, you can earn $1,000 in referrals for egg and sperm donors and $6,000 or more per surrogate referral. If you or someone you know is struggling with infertility, remember that you are not alone. The experts at Road to Baby are there to help you navigate this often challenging path to parenthood. Their experience and guidance can make all the difference in your journey. Road to Baby exists to help growing families and creating a life-lasting connection and making dreams a reality. If you're ready to take that first step or just curious to learn more about the process, schedule a free consultation with Road to Baby. Visit www.roadtobaby.com. R-O-A-D-T-O-B-A-B-Y.com. Who knows? Could be anything. Who knows what it could be? Could be sexual. Could be normal. Could be cringy. Have you ever chased anyone in a car? If (laughs) yes, why? (laughs) please wait i'm dying never in my life <laughs> have i chased anyone in a car because that's so scary what do you mean like chased anyone like like a okay i actually have like road rage no 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 no. i'm not that crazy i was in high school okay i'm a bachelor freak okay i talked about how i wanted to name my kid bentley from the bachelor yeah yeah. Do you, 
I have a kid named Brooks. Do you know Brooks Forrester? Of course. I took photos of him. Yeah, of course. Um, I'm a freak and I was obsessed. I was in high school. I was a senior in high school. I was obsessed with him. I wanted to have sex with him. I was like, he <laughs> is going to marry me. Like, I don't care. He was really cute. He was, he was, he was, he was the thing. Yeah, like, he was. He's what I wanted. He's really good looking. I had met, I had met him at like a bachelor fan. I was literally a fan. Okay. Like I took photos of him when I was like probably 20. Yeah. I, like, was, I was not, I know I didn't even know Leif at that point. And I remember being like, you're hot. You're maybe one of the hottest people like, I've seen. Like so tall. Yeah. Tall. Like I have pictures with him. Like, really I tall. Would, I hung out with him kind of. Not really. Like I tried. I tried <laughs> to be in the same presence. I was underage. I was like 17. I'm like, he wants to do me. Like we're going to make babies and live happily at Raptor. You don't need Desiree. You need Josie. And so I, I was at school and somebody had texted me and was like, Josie, Brooks Forrester is at Corner Canyon, the other high school. So I went to Alta and Corner Canyon is like okay. down the street. Yeah. It was a brand new high school. And they were like, he's there doing something for an assembly. And I was like, I'm on my way. I get my two friends. We literally just leave class. We get in our car. We find him. We see this man getting into like an like a old school BMW or maybe it was like a Volvo. I can't remember. And I was like, that's him. That's him. We chase that motherfucker like all the way to a stoplight or a stop sign. I get out of the car. I have my camera off to show you the video. It is so embarrassing. Stop it. I get out of the car after we chased him to this stop, this four-way stop. And I'm like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I go to his window and he rolls down the window. I'm like, I love you, I love you. And, he's and you're like, recording it? I'm recording it. Josie, you're going to get your karma now. Like when you become, when you become even bigger podcaster, like people are going to be like chasing you, like coming to your door being like, I no, love Josie, you, Josie. You and you're going to be like, you're going to die. You're going to die. It's so embarrassing. No. But then the funny thing about it was, is that happened. And I was like, we were dying. We like followed him for a minute. And then yeah. I was like, okay, this is getting borderline yeah. illegal. We should, <laughs> we should stop. He's like, who are these high school girls following me? Then like fast forward like two weeks or maybe even a little bit more after that, he did like this bachelor viewing for Juan Pablo season. And it was like him, Jeff Holmes and Michelle Money. Wait, was that like the worst season of all time? Juan Pablo? The worst I season of all time. Like, he's like such a piece of shit. Where, yeah. He is trash. Yeah, he is trash. And he, <laughs> it was like this whole thing. I go and he, I'm like, I'm the girl that ran up to your window. And he was like, oh my gosh, we should reenact that video that you made with Jeff Holmes. So I have a video of me and Okay, Brooks so we thought Forrester. it was like kind of funny oh, then. Yeah. No, he, he was, was flirting. <gasps> like, like I said, okay. like he wanted to marry me. <laughs> like I said, he was obsessed. Like if I was 18, we would have literally gotten married. <laughs> and but I, he had a girlfriend, but it was fine. And then we like reenacted the video and I thought we were friends. Like totally thought 100%. we were friends. But it all started from me chasing, chasing him, him in, the car. in the car. I can honestly say I do not think I've ever chased anyone in a car. Good for you. Like you have I standards. Think, I have, like I have morals. Um, <laughs> like I'm no, not a horrible I, human. I, I, I'm trying to think of like anyone in high school or like originally when I read this question, I thought it meant like, you know, like if you get road rage, yeah, you're yeah, like, yeah. oh, I'm going to follow this person. It's like, oh, never would I ever do okay, that. Well, nowadays like, people terrifying. like get shot. I know. That. That's what I'm saying. Did you hear about the one in Utah? There was like no. road rage and I think it was like Kaysville or something. And they pulled over in a parking lot to yell and one of them shot the other one. And I no. was like. Are we? We're not okay. No, we're not okay as a society. We're not okay. It's a red light. Like, it's road rage. Like, like it's not grow that up. serious. Grow up. It's really not that serious. Do you I'm get so road scared. rage ever? I mean, I get road rage mm. to the point where I'm like, you stupid no. little motherfucker. I yeah, I'm more I don't, just like, like get out of my way. Like, I'm not, I don't have, Leif has road rage. Oh my gosh. He's like the calmest. He like, everyone's like, so Leif chill. has the calmest energy. I'm like, have you been in like... <laughs> In a he's stressful like, car situation, like, he doesn't even like honk. He gets very like passive aggressive. Like he'll like make them so annoyed if they, yeah. which like again, it's really slow. Yeah, like he'll be like, okay, you want to do that? Like I'm gonna, and we'll I'm like, that. babe, they're like, again, I'm scared like their blinkers of stuff. on. They're yeah. trying to get over. Yeah, I'm like, and he's like, yeah, I know they're trying to get over. Like he like makes them pay. That's that's yeah. what he, his pay his back. motto. Yeah, he's just like he doesn't say that in as many words, but that's yeah. what he's trying to do. Is like, yeah. oh no, they will pay for what they've done. Like yeah, no. I'm like, babe, they but it's really not serious. Like. This just reminded me of the video when you pranked him and made it look like someone was stealing your car. <laughs> um, that was the most iconic thing I've ever seen in my life, by the way. That is such a funny That's video. That's nothing I, to do with road rage, but it has to do with the car. So I feel like it, it came up. It. Oh my gosh, that video. Like I remember it like once every few months and I'm like, yeah. I need to go watch that for like a good laugh. No, it is so- It's hilarious. Like, he, was, he, like, he was like, what What do you do? Like, but he, he also was, is like so calm. He was literally yeah. snapping. <laughs> Everyone's like, not the snap. Like most people be like, Get the f out of my car! He's like, he's like, hey, like as if the snap will do. That's anything. like the parents. Which, snap. Like, yeah, but here. literally he does come that here. to lady. Like, come here, lady. I'm like, babe, what were you like thinking? They were gonna get scared of the snap. <laughs> <laughs> he's, like, 
Okay. You need to make merch of like a guy just like going like this and be like, hey, <laughs> just exclamation I, point. I was like, wait, if someone broke in, like, what would you do? Snap at them? <laughs> it's like the middle of the night. He hears somebody. Hey, get out of here. Like, so. Oh, my gosh. It really is the funniest oh, video. It's so funny. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, like, I will find it. Is it on your Instagram anymore? It's on my TikTok. I don't know if I ever posted on Instagram. Oh, my gosh. But it's so basically, funny. Basically, yeah, our friends came into town, and he didn't know they were there yet. Like, we were doing a birthday thing for him, yeah. and he didn't know that they were coming in. They live, like, far away, so he, yeah. he was not expecting. And um, basically, we, like, set up this whole plan. We're like, okay, we have this, like, vintage car, and it has, like, the top off. Yeah, it's so cute. And I love it so much. But we were like, yeah, like, pretend like you're you put like bandanas over your head and like act like you're stealing it and they went so far like our friend the guy jordan he like brought wires so that it looked like he was like hot wiring it and lake literally was like what's happening and i i didn't know almost expect him to believe it we were inside a coffee shop yeah, and they're like, like okay we're doing? here and i'm like okay i have to film him and i have to like act like someone's in our car and yeah. and leif is very like perceptive like if i try and prank him ever he's like i got you I, like yeah. come on yeah. Like I can never get away with anything. So I was like, oh, I just wonder if this is gonna turn out. And yeah, I was like, I was like, oh my gosh. Like if there's someone in our car, like so who is out there? And he seems to like look out the window. He's like, and then yeah, the snap heard around the like, world. And he like, goes out there and he's like, he's like, hey, what are you doing? What are you doing? He, and he's like, hey, like because Jordan's like not answering him. He's like, hey, what are you doing? Like <laughs> and then he kind of like moves no, him. So funny. And then he realizes it's the funniest no, video. It is the funniest video of all time. I'm obsessed with it. Um, and it's my Roman Empire, I think. Like, <laughs> just hey. Get hey. out of here. No. Know. So funny. Okay, I'll do I'll do one more to see if you can actually answer one that's okay. not about chasing, chasing someone in car. a car. Okay. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> if you had okay, if you had the power to choose your age, what age would you choose? <laughs> what? <laughs> The fuck is this question? <laughs> um, I'm not doing that. Okay. That's I don't even know that I don't even understand that question. I don't understand that Would question. Would you want to be a different age? Okay. Oh, have you ever been so scared that you wet your pants? Or laughed? Or have you ever peed uh, your pants? I've peed my pants so many times. I've never I've never peed my pants from being scared. Never from scared. I almost said scared them. Like that's not a thing. Never that's been not scared a word. Them. Um like boredom, but scared them as well. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. That's our new word. Um Definitely from laughing though. Oh. I have the weakest bladder. Oh, like I'm actually scared. So my mom literally yeah. got like a well, I probably shouldn't like tell her medical things, but I think it might be genetic that I have like a weak like yeah. um where like I sneeze and I'll pee yeah. a little bit. You should do pelvic floor. Have you heard about that? Yes, my mom does it. She's like yeah. so passionate about it. Yeah. I need to start doing yeah. it because people are like, Oh yeah, like after pregnancy. I'm like, hmm, what about before pregnancy? What about during? Because yeah. literally, like, this is so TMI, but I would be throwing up like because I was yes, sick and, and I'd pee every time. Me too. Literally, like, pee, and I'm like, you're great. throwing up so hard. Yeah, even pregnant. Have you? Has that no, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. When I've been pregnant, so I yep. like if I if I already had to pee at all, if Game I go over. and throw up, like I'm peeing my pants, not like full blown, but just like but, a little bit will come out. Yeah, it's coming. And I'm out. like, okay, so it's giving weak, yeah. um, which means I'm sure after it. birth, like it's gonna be horrible. Yeah, I'm terrified. Yeah, no. So, but I've peed through like from laughing multiple times, like in high school. When you're with your girlfriends, there's nothing better. Honestly. There is nothing more that's like <laughs> girlhood. Yes. This is us being girlies than peeing your pants together. So true. It's like the best feeling. <laughs> the best feeling. I love being that covered in warm, pee. That warm sensation <laughs> in your crotch. No, I feel just the same. laughing your head off. I remember like walking somewhere with, I think it was my cousin or one of my friends. I can't remember. Uh, we were walking to Sonic, and uh -huh. we, like, laughed so hard that I, I don't remember if both of us did, but I definitely peed my pants laughing. And and, just... and that is girlhood. Like, we were walking <laughs> to get, like, a sweet little drink, and I'm just, like, peeing my pants yeah. laugh laughing, yeah. and I'm like, yep. And it's always the cross of the hands, like, yeah. the glaze, like, I'm peeing my yeah. pants. Like, it's so funny. And then you just so have, like, real. the big wet spot right there. Yeah. And honestly, I'm going to frame the next time I pee my pants. Do you know what happened to me? I peed my, um, I've told this story on the podcast a while ago, but I peed my pants like very early on in, t in marriage in the bed. I peed the bed. Like had you never. Like, like you were sleeping? Yes. Like I was sleeping and I literally full on wet the bed and I was like, am I okay? Because that has never, like I've never been a bed yeah. really like sure maybe when I was like super young, whatever, yeah, yeah, but yeah. nothing that I can even like point back to. But like that never happens to me. It literally scarred me for life. Like Leif was so sweet about it. He didn't care, but it was like newly married. Okay. We were like newly married and I was like, I have to literally wake up my new husband. 
I'd be like, hey, it's 3 a.m. Like, I peed the bed. We have to, like, wash all the sheets. And he was so nice about it and sweet and, like, didn't even care. He's like, oh, it's fine. Like, didn't make a big deal about it. How did he not laugh? I think he kind of did. He's like, oh, really? Okay. <laughs> um, and I was oh, like, oh, I didn't know I married a five year old. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't know how to express this enough. Like, this has never happened to me. I'm like, let me make that very clear. This, this is, is not, not like something so, yeah. that happens. But, um, and it never happened again. But, I, d- I still don't, like, know the reason, but it scarred me to the point where, like, I pee the nanosecond before I'm, like, falling asleep. Like, if I've been in bed for an hour and I'm just, like, reading or, like, on my phone or something, go I'm, like, I have to go again. Like, if I already yeah. went, I'm, like, because I don't want to pee tonight. Empty the bladder. Yeah. Empty- well, and I'm the person that keeps a giant – I love water, okay? I'm- I drink these big-ass jugs yeah. all day long. So I keep them by my bed. So I have to pee even – if I slept through me having to pee, I would pee a freaking fountain. Like really? I would have so much pee because I pee in the middle of the night, but I like wake all up all the time, all the time. So when I'm pregnant, it's even worse. I wake up every night in the middle of the night. To pee. I very Being rarely pregnant. sleep through the night. Like I slept through the night while we've been on this trip because I have had no kids, and so my body's like, no, you're not peeing. Like you're going to bed. Yeah. But at home, I'll wake up at like two a.m. and go pee. I've been doing that every night lately. So, it's been bothering well, yeah, me so I'm much. Pregnant, I'm like, great. Can't wait for... Third trimester, I'm up too. I'm up at four. I'm up at six. Really? Go and pee. I feel like that'll be me. My husband does sleepwalk though. And this happened just recently. I actually no. shared this on a podcast episode forever ago. He, we get up in the morning and he's like, why is it wet right here? And it's like wet on like the floor and like part of like the top of our bed and pillow. And he's like, wait, I think, I think I stood up and peed here last night. No. How often does he sleepwalk? Honestly, it's probably like once every four months he'll okay. do it. But I don't know. And then he'll like wake up and there's like peanut butter all over his face. And he's like, I didn't do this. Okay. And I'm like, like something. I wrong. didn't do this. You're like, <laughs> I think you did. did. Like, have you seen that viral girl on, I think it's TikTok where she like films. She has like a secret camera that films her sleepwalking. because no. She does it all the time. No. It is hilarious. There's one of her like sticking a spoon up her butt. Like, <laughs> Wait, I'm terrified. Like, no, it is the funniest thing. And part of me is like, you're pretending. Like, this isn't real. And she's like, no, like, she has a disorder where she truly, at night, like, turns into a different person. Like, when she's I'm asleep, sure. when she goes into REM, which is, like, deep sleep. Yeah, she just, like, gets she, up. She just, like, changes. What is the psychology behind that? I, I have no I idea. I don't know. I don't know any, like, no sleepwalkers. Idea. But my, my mother-in-law was telling me that, like, my husband has been a sleepwalker his whole life. Like, Weird. she would find him in the middle of the night like standing over his brother about to pee on him not the pee it's like a pee thing it's like it's like like, look over your penis like stop like you don't need to pee on everything marking your territory everywhere but yeah pee and then food he's either eating something or he's peeing on something and she would have to like stop are you a heavy sleeper no okay no and as a mom i feel like you can't be yeah because you hear every little thing yeah i'm not a heavy sleeper either (laughs) waking up yeah no no i my daughter actually I think is gonna have what my husband has because she has night terrors did you ever have night terrors growing up I didn't I I know a lot of people that did I had night terrors but not to the extent of my daughter I'm like what's sad I'm like I don't know what to do so we just started giving her melatonin at night we're like drugging her to go to sleep go to sleep I'm like melatonin's fine that's hard to I'm sure that's like scary if you like does she like wake up screaming or like screaming and nothing like she's completely out of it Oh, that's scary. Because, like, you try to comfort her, yeah. but, like, she's not awake. But, like, yeah. you're not supposed to, like, wake them up abruptly. So it's, like, you're, like, trying to calm them mm. down, but, like, she's not coming out of it. So we notice if we give her melatonin, she'll stay asleep the whole night and mm. won't have a night terror. But I'm, like, if anybody listening has kids that have night terrors, like, any other tricks besides yeah. melatonin? Because at some point her body's going to be, like, this Used to it or working. something. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Dang. But. But that's what I saw in peeing in bed. Um, I still don't understand this question. If you had the power to choose your age, what age would you choose? Like, w- like, would you like, want to be older like or for, younger right now? Like, like if, for your entire life, like a vampire, like pick the age that you become a vampire. Oh, I was thinking more just like, like right now, if you were like, oh, I want to be like 18 again and like oh, relive. I want to be a baby and just like, <laughs> <laughs> I want to be a newborn actually. No, I think it'd be cool to like go into the future and see what I look like at like 60 years old and like mm. ask if the Botox worked. Like, yeah. Like is, see what worked and what didn't. Like, what do I need to go back and fix? Yes. Like, sh- is the preventative stuff bullshit? Because mm-hmm. I think it is, but I'm still doing it. Like, I want to yeah. know, do I really need to stop being in the sun or are they lying to me? That is like my Roman empire actually. Like, like the sunscreen that like, I, I've seen so many things on both sides where it's yes. like, it's like, don't wear sunscreen. But that's like, like, you need vitamin yeah, D. Yeah. 
but yeah, like you need vitamin D, like the sun is so good for you. And then like other people are like, literally stay out of the sun. Like not only does it cause this, it's like skin cancer. And I've always, I I am such a fair skinned person. I feel like I'm very much like, I have to wear sunscreen or else I'm going to actually get fried. Yeah. But Leif is like, I feel like it's so good to get sunlight. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, I see that. But it's like, maybe it depends on your skin tone because- I'm legitimately gonna get like third degree burns if I just yeah, go for it. Yeah, do you burn it. so easy? Oh, I burn so easily and get like blisters. Like See, I, I don't have burn. to be. That's so lucky. So I'm like, I don't need it. No, I feel like it depends on your skin type. But like literally, it. if I go out in the sun for a while, I will burn and get. I at one point got a sunburn. It was when I was a lot younger. I was probably like ten. Got a sunburn and had blisters this big legitimately like diameter of like four inches all over my shoulders and back literally had to sleep in like my grandpa's like old huge shirt and was literally just like this like on the couch oh, because I couldn't even like thing. I couldn't lay down because all the blisters would pop on my back like traumatizing and um, now I have like yeah. so many freckles from that specific sunburn so I am like okay I don't mess around with yeah so sun. you've probably never been in a tanning bed Oh, I think I actually did a few times in high school. Like, the because dumbest thing in my I life. I was a tanning bed girl. Because it doesn't work for me. I don't get tan ever. That's oh, the thing about me. I was my most beautiful when I was in tanning beds. When you were? Yeah. Because I had, like, the most beautiful golden skin. If I could change one... Like, I try and, like, love and accept myself. But, like, if yeah. I could change one thing, it'd be that I can get tan. Because yeah. I do not tan at all. And, like, Leif, like, I tricked him into marriage. Because when I met him, I had self-tanner on. Yeah, yeah. And, he, and he'd be like, oh, you can get tan, like, a little bit. And I'm like... Yeah. yeah, and then like after I married him, I'm like, it's called Saint Tropez. Yeah, I'm like Saint Tropez, baby. Like <laughs> it, that's all you've been seeing. What are you talking about? And Leif's like, I can't wait to like take our baby to the beach, and I'm like, let's be prepared for her to like have. There's a chance she's not gonna be like a bronze. She's gonna be beauty. the kid in like the long sleeve yeah. swimsuit with the hat, yeah. white face from the sunscreen. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm like I would love nothing more. Obviously, she's gonna grow up like near the ocean. I would love for her to be like a little beach baby, but also. Is that realistic? We gotta be, yeah, it's like we got to be conscious of the skin because we don't want to You never burn. know. You never know. Because my two oldest, tan, tan, tan kids, my third baby, I don't know where he came from. Really? He has blonde hair and he is so pale. Oh, interesting. And my other two had dark brown hair and were tan. Yeah, Leif can get tan, so I'm like, maybe she will so be able to. But And like Leif's side of the family, they can all get really tan, but like my family is like very pale. Like both my parents are really pale. They don't get tan. Have you done the thing where you mesh your guys' faces to see what your future kids will look yeah. like? What do they look really like? Really cute, actually. I'm so excited. I need to find And I love that photo. it's a girl. I know. It's I'm so I'm so excited it's for so you. Thank you. Well, thanks for coming on Weekly Trash. This oh was gosh. so much fun. I'm glad we got to talk about the gender now that it's like out. And I Me hope too. I hope that the reveal like works out. You get the blue, the pink, the blue, the pink. Me and too. If it, the if, song works out. Yeah. If it's just me in a pink outfit, mind your business. Um, no one's still my idea. Yeah, I'm using it for no my next kid. Yeah, no, I'm no, kidding. Literally. Um, have you seen someone do that? No. Okay. I haven't either. I haven't so either. I was like, maybe that's something like, no, you know, trying original. to be back in my creative yeah, era. I'm creative. like, maybe that's something like kind of it's fun. Creative. Like I've seen people do TikToks where they're like transitioning really quickly, but not with gen- like the, the gender, gender thing. thing. Right, right, right. Like, yeah, we'll see if we'll see if it all pans out. If not, I mean, it's not really that deep. Like, we can just take a cute photo. But it's but I thought it'd be fun. So you're, we'll see. And you're gonna dye your hair black. And, <laughs> and I will have black hair with extensions down to my knees next time you see me because yeah. it's a rebrand. And like a nose piercing, maybe. Yeah. Would mm-hmm. you ever pierce your nose? Mm, I don't know. I, my question is, when you take it out, is there just like a hole <clears throat> in your nose? I think it probably like heals up. You know, just how like, like an that's ear- what would scare me. Yeah. It's like, I'm what if like you're doing opposed. makeup, you get foundation like stuck in your nose hole and then it like gets infected? Yeah. Like, I'm does not that a happen? big like piercing girl just because I feel like, well, I have trauma from piercings. I won't get into that. We're okay. like ending the okay. episode. Okay. But yeah, it's, we're done. It, but anyway, <laughs> I like bled a lot when I, I like pierce. Uh, I'm like, I won't get into it. I'll see the whole story. <laughs> um, we're here. I just was bleeding so much when I got one of these piercings. Literally woke up and my entire neck was covered in okay, blood. Wait, did you was not okay. post about this? Because I yeah, think on I TikTok s- yes. I got taken down for community guidelines. Don't we look? That makes no sense to me. There's literally like porn on TikTok. <laughs> don't check our what we said tagged photos. Like it is full on porn. I'm like, K. Okay. Like I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't I, I don't d- get how it's allowed. Like how are they sneaking past there's this one guy do you have, I don't know why this happens. Like you're scrolling, all of a sudden you're on someone's live, and you're like, on, "How did I, I hate that on like, TikTok?" Yeah, like yeah, how did I get here? And it's this guy that pretends to be doing like being a chiropractor. He pretends to be a chiropractor, but really he's just like touching hot women with big titties and just like okay, interesting niche, like, and then making noises like ah, 
Because no. they're like getting their backs cracked. But he did ke- your back actually just crack? No, it was your. Oh, okay, <laughs> I'm just like an old woman. I'm like, it's okay. Like, <laughs> no, but he's like pretending to like crack the back, and they're like, ah, ah, no, ah. I'm so scared. And I'm like, there's a 12 year old watching this right now, like a hundred percent. TikTok is scary. It is so confusing to me. It really is. Like I could post literally my shoulder, and they like take it down. And I then put, there's other stuff that it will just like. No, it makes no sense. It makes no sense. I did like a video talking about like body dysmorphia and how like I was having a heart. This was like three years ago. And I was just like, I'm so sad. Like I'm so over like feeling like I don't match like my body with my effort, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, sorry, no, this is against community guidelines. You're like, cool. And I was like, what? Can you turn to be vulnerable? What part of it? <laughs> like me expressing my sadness? <laughs> like what? Okay. Cool. Cool. Yeah, no. yeah it, they pick and choose. Do you prefer TikTok or Instagram or YouTube or or podcast? Which one's your fave? Podcast. Podcast. I love podcasting myself and I love like listening to podcasts and watching podcasts. They're I feel like best. it's just the move. They're the best. It's my favorite. TikTok is kind of like losing me a little bit right now. I, I really I, haven't been on in a minute. I usually am like the most addicted ever. Like I'm just on it all the time. I think it's so fun, so funny. And like lately I've kind of just not been in my TikTok era. No, I'm usually why. addicted, but this trip I've been so busy I haven't scrolled once. Yeah. And now I like don't like, feel like don't I'm miss missing it. out on anything. Yeah. And and I yeah. I feel like Instagram's like having a bit like I was saying in the beginning, I'm like a little bit more into yeah. it right now, but it also stresses me out. So I don't know. But podcasting is just podcasting best. is just fun. It's just so fun. It's, it's always fun. good vibes. It's like, always good vibes. Yeah. And you just feel like you're in the room. Just feel happy. <laughs> yeah, it's like good. I know. I it's agree. good for the soul. What podcast do you listen to? I feel like as a podcaster, I, I don't listen to that many because I'm either podcasting or I'm with my kids. So I don't really have that's time. That's kind of how I feel lately where it's like, also, I, I get scared that I'm going to like copy? copy them. That's me subconsciously. too. Subconsciously. Like their opinions on a certain yeah. take. Like I'm I like, don't want to start like talking like them mm-hmm. or doing things like them because I'm like, I want to keep my individuality. Yeah. Um, But... I do love the toast. Same. I haven't been as updated recently with it, um, just because they come out with so many episodes, which Every is amazing. Single day, but sometimes like when I get behind, I'm like overwhelmed. I'm like, wait, should I go back and listen? Yeah, or should yeah, I just yeah. like start fresh? Um, but honestly, I love like just Trish, oh, Trisha Paytas' oh, podcast. I haven't listened to. It. I've seen her clips though on TikTok. She is just it. she's hilarious. The most incredible. Person. She's the most entertaining person because alive. she like is the definition of delusional doesn't care what anyone thinks no. like in her own world i know i was thinking even just like her tiktoks i'm like so many people love you because you are actually the like you said like the definition of just like i don't care and it's okay. like so clear yeah it's not trying to be oh i no. don't care what people it's like no you do not care no and it's so refreshing so refreshing it's actually so fun to well, she's just hilarious and she comes from like a like you can tell she's a sweet person yeah like she's not like a, like if she ever says something that's like that's offensive you're like but you don't you need don't mean it. it i know she just like, has you're this just sweet she's just an anomaly i think yeah. No, so, she's one of a kind. And I like, her episodes are like really long. So sometimes I just like like putting that on and I'll like watch it over a few days. I also love Cancelled with Brooke and Tana Mojo. I, they're really funny. They're, I, I don't listen to them, but I watch their clips. Because again, I don't want, I don't have time to listen to full yeah. podcasts. But their clips I love. I feel like their dynamic is just like, it's really good. Like they are just, they're a good vibe together. They're and they're funny. Vibe. And they're both smart. Like, well, I like and them. they also are the kind of people that don't care but in a different way yeah Trish Paytas like doesn't care but also is she on our planet I don't know no I, I do feel that with Tana and Brooke they definitely have like decaf energy where yeah. they'll like say stuff it's like yeah. oh, okay you will just kind of we're just gonna skip say, over that yeah like, it's like okay. you'll just say whatever like yeah. I really I respect it no I love obviously they... Ty Tyrants oh, t- Tyrants like Are how you could we forget obsessed but he's the best I'm trying to think of what else I listen to regularly but those are like probably the main ones yeah. in my rotation that I listen to with the canceled one I mm-hmm. loved when Brooke called out Matt Rife. What an I was just waiting for it. Moment. I was like, it's finally. I couldn't finally. believe it. I was I was like, wait, I cannot believe he like, like did all this shiz. No, it was crazy. I mean I can. Let's, it's crazy. Be, let's be real. Have you ever met um like a what's like the biggest celebrity you've ever met in LA? Celebrity? Yeah. I've seen celebrities that I'm trying to think of like met. Because I've seen like I'm sure um, you've seen tons. I've saw like Kylie Jenner at Blue Bottle Coffee and Stormy. Stormy? And I've seen like um Miley Cyrus and Liam Hemsworth when they were married. Oh my gosh. In Malibu. I've seen, like, I've seen celebrities, but met? Oh my gosh, I don't even know. 
I really don't know who I've like met. And I'm trying to think. Like, I feel like I've been to events where I've met them. But celebrity I can't that I met was JC Marie Smith. I'm like, <laughs> who, who else? Oh, I'm sorry, Kendall Jenner. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. No, it's funny because like people that you probably don't think are celebrities because they're in your like circle i'm like no that's you're like that was the celeb i met like what are you talking about like this getting confidential like oh for sure no they're literally celebrities like, still, even though they're like my boss celebrity kinda, like celebrity my dear media I, mean, I know <laughs> when i saw lauren i was like wait my heart like dropped i was like wait when i first met her yeah now i'm like friends with her it's different yeah. also when you like keep meeting someone you're like okay yes. you're a normal person yeah you're but, like not the a celebrity. first meeting you're like huh. Like, oh my gosh like in the flesh you took my breath away like, truly yeah I'm using my my roller every yeah. morning iced like i love her obviously yeah obviously. she's an icon you're an icon <sighs> and that's how we're gonna end the episode is thank you so much you are an icon jc marie smith everybody the icon of the century thank you so much for coming on weekly thank trash you so much for having me this is so fun i love you love you trashers and everyone loves you have the best day you guys and don't forget to take out your trash Bye. bye <laughs>